Envision a sanctuary where community and sustainability are the cornerstones of living. In this haven, every family is able to grow their own food, children flourish through homeschooling tailored to unlock their full potential, and education extends beyond textbooks, instilling self-worth and a deep understanding of the world around them. Here, goodwill isn't just an ideal, it's the essence of daily life, where respect for law and order harmonizes with the community's resourcefulness. This place isn't just a dream, it's a call to action for everyone who believes in a better, more connected way of living. Join us in building a future where each individual's contributions create a tapestry of enduring harmony and prosperity. Join us in Ho Tapistan. What a spicy, spicy week. Crazy. Grip Report starts right now. Two, one, boom. Hotep Jesus. Of all the Jesuses I know, he's the Hotepiest. Social scientist and YouTube host, Hotep Jesus. How the fuck do you get a name like Hotep Jesus? The one and only Hotep Jesus. Ryan Sharp, better known to the world as Hotep Jesus. Hotep Jesus. Hotep Jesus. Hotep, Hotep, Hotep Jesus. Hotep, you're a genius. HotepJesus.com. Somebody said, what do you think you are? Some kind of Hotep Jesus? Ooh, and that's I was good. Just like, ooh, that's sexy. <laughs> yes, I do think I'm Hotep <laughs> Jesus. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Griff Report. Live Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, the Griff God. Now, hold on, I got to do that. Because I'm trying to do too. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to the Griff Report, live Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, the Griff God. Hotep Jesus. Hotep Jesus. Hotep, Hotep, Hotep Jesus. Hotep, you're a genius. Hotepjesus.com. Oh, this is a real Hotep, brother. Hotep to the chat. Hotep to the Hotep of Stannis. Hotep. For the people that don't know, those sound bites you hear at the beginning of every show are the voices of Scott Adams in order. Scott Adams, Alex Jones, and Charleston White. The Charleston White one came during my interview with uh, Blaze Personality and uh, former grifter of the year, Alex Stein. Um, during an episode he had, and uh, there was some... There was some rainbow activities happening during that show. Uh, I told Charleston White he didn't have to deal with it. And that's when he said, oh, this is a real hotel, brother. So I clipped that. That's where that came from. Shout out to Steph, Dre Brown, Lauren. What up, Rue? Shout out to Grandma. Loki in the chat. Strong Dad in the chat. Rom Life, Fresh Mike. I'll see y'all. DJ Protocol. In the house. What's up, Hotep fam? I should probably start there. I should probably start with the Hotep fam. Um, let me find that tweet. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, oh, Colin Rugg deleted the tweet. It was probably fake news. I knew it was fake news when I saw it was Colin Rugg. He always posts fake news. Well, I don't want to say always. Most of the time he's. He's questionable. He's one of those breaking news guys, you know, where they break news, but they don't really break news. They just break the news. Like the br news is broken because of them. Um, you know, these type of, uh, these type of grifters, you know, they rush to be first, not accurate. So, yeah, I'm not surprised to see him delete that tweet. So, as I search for the tweet here, this, uh, what's today? The 29th? So I'm looking for the 28th. Um, where is it? Here we go. Put this on your screen now. Hopefully it fills up properly. <clears throat> Today's uh, streaming goal is going to be Let's change this to 44 bucks. 44 bucks for today's goal. 
keep the haters away, keep the bill collectors away. Appreciate y'all and all the support. So yesterday after, you know, some of the tips that happened, I, uh, I tweeted this out directly after the stream. I said, I love my community and all of its dysfunction. And after I typed it before I hit send, I said, I know this is going to be construed as, or the, the term community is going to be construed as black people. Right? Figured that, right? So the first response I believe I saw was from Danny Mayday. And he says here, it must be nice. Why is it that you're allowed to have a community, but I'm not? Right? So keep in mind, there's no, mate, no, no uh, race mentioned in my tweet. They just saw black guy and community and go, he must be talking about black people. Like, no, we don't play your race games over here. I'm talking about the Hotep community, a very private community, a very um, close-knit community. Where we don't play your, you know, human games. We are gods over here. We don't play your little human funny games. Keep you going back and forth over nonsense. We have our own dysfunction. And he says, must be nice. Uh, why is it that you're allowed to have community? Now, the lesson here is, this is a very simple lesson, actually. This is, this is, this is very important, especially for uh, white people, right? So they tell you that you're not allowed to be pro-white, right? They, oh, you can be pro-black, but you can't be pro-white. And the funny thing is there are many people specifically coming from the Moorish community that tell people, specifically black people, that don't use the term black and don't use the term white. In fact, I got a friend who, when I'm around him, won't allow me to use the terms black and white. He gets he gets irritated by it because he says to me, he says, bro, you're way too educated to use those terms. So when I'm around him out of respect for him, I don't refer to uh, the races uh, based upon these uh, legal color codes, white and black. Um, so not only does this apply to black people, it applies to white people. So the issue is that these these color codes are patented right? Quote unquote patented. They're not literally patented, but they're, you know, it's uh, an unwritten rule that these terms are owned by something, some entity, some governing body owns these terms, right? And they use these terms to classify you, okay? And it could be governmental. So they tell you you can't be pro-white. Well, I got to ask you this. Have you ever seen somebody get castigated for saying that they're proud to be Italian. No. You see, these halls called it the Italian American Hall. You can rent out these halls in New Jersey called the Italian American Halls. And they call themselves Italian Americans. You often see white people say, why do you have to hyphenate African American? Why does it have to be African American? But they don't have that same disdain for the Italians. Um, you see uh, Irish people, Irish people can come out and say, hey, you know, I'm proud to be Irish. I'm proud to be Polish. I'm proud to be Russian. I'm proud to be English. I'm proud to be German. And this comes back to something and I've told you in the past is that white and black people suffer from an identity crisis. Their identity has been stripped from them and it's been stripped from them in order to erase the memory of their past, erase their history. So they're both dealing with an identity crisis. So now what happens is you have white people saying, how come I can't be pro-white? And my response to that is you shouldn't want to be. Go find out who you are and represent that. Um, so when I talk to my friend who gets irritated when I use these terms, the, the terms that he'll accept are for black people. Uh, there's several terms, but I prefer to use African. And for white people, I use European. And many white people will say, well, I'm not European, I'm American. And um, to that, I always say, um, you're just admitting, admitting to me that you're ignorant of the truth of, um, of our lives. Okay? You don't know how the world actually works. You, you haven't done enough studies. 
um, to understand how this world operates. And um, if you were to ask them where do you know so-called white people come from, they'll tell you, well, Europe, right? Well, so you're, you're European. You're a European. You're from the Yamnaya tribe. You're from the Corded Ware tribe. You are Yamnaya people. It's who you are. Okay? However, because of media propaganda uh, designed to create the illusion that white people in America are somehow different or separate from white people in um, Europe, they create this division in, in everyone's mind. It seems to work very well. I think you are designated different from them. And they create the Olympic Games and all these different things that just divide humanity globally. So you don't want to claim you're European because Europe is your enemy in many ways, right? Uh, or at least that's how the media teaches it to you. That's how you're your textbook teaches it to you. Your Houghton Mifflin, your Rockefeller education, it is how it's taught to you. You should not side with your, your ancestors and your forefathers fought for your freedom here in America. Even though they love the crown. Anyway. So, what is my uh, remedy? My remedy is find out who you are and represent that. Or create something new. Don't use their words. Don't use their words black. Don't use their words white. Create your own terms. Create your own community based upon your own language. And I don't mean, you know, you have to go create a whole new language, but you can use the English language and still create your own language. I mean, that's what dialects are. That's what black people have done with slang. The word doesn't mean exactly what it says. Right? So in, that, in, in a sense, you create your own language. So they, they, they look and they see me say community and they think, oh, he's talking about the black community. I'm talking about the Hotep community, something that we created. And that's what's key. You need community creation. Community creation is important. Um, let's go to the next one. The next one here is from a black woman, Miss uh, Naya Major. She says, I don't love black folk dysfunction. It almost killed me when I was a little kid. Now, because she's dealing with some childhood trauma, I don't want to dig on her. I don't want to do it. I don't want to. Um, hold on. I got to go to the quote tweets. You post engagement quotes. Here we go. So she, she not only posted underneath my tweet, but then under the quote tweets. And again, this is what happens when you deal with trauma. Like when you have trauma, you see the trauma in everything. When I'm not even talking about the black community. So she says again, here, I'll read. I don't love black folk dysfunction. It almost killed me when I was a little kid. So we've been trained to believe that when a black person says my community, they're talking about black people because we see it so much. So you just, you jump to conclusions. But again, I'm not talking about black people, I'm talking about the community we created, the Hotep community. Okay. Sophia Johnson responds to her and says, what is on his mind? Hotep Jesus embracing dysfunction is exactly why folks question if black communities actually see a need for repair. Narratives like this embolden the culture, quote unquote, that money cannot fix. In this tweet, he gave cause to reparations hard pass. He didn't brought reparations and all that kind of shit. It's like, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> there is my response. Uh, and Elon's Twitter won't bring it up. So, whoops. Um, let's try and fix that. You post engagement. So I said, I was talking about our Hotep community, not the black community. Nothing in my tweet mentioned race. You put that there on your own. <laughs> he says here, actually, this narrative spread based on an opinion shared, not citing your, po uh, citing your post. The lack of distinction left your post up to interpretation. 
I stand corrected. Thank you for clarifying. Influence is a power tool. With great power comes great responsibility. And I said to her, I said, it's incumbent upon you to do the due diligence and not run with other people's comments, but thank you for your correction. He said, I did. Instead of only assuming I tagged you in my repost, that's about as diligent as I can be. Women, you know, women never really want to. Women never really want to um, take accountability for the actions. We talk about that a lot on this beautiful misogynistic channel of ours. Women very rarely, I should say, I should say girls. Because when you're a woman, you take responsibility for your action. When you're a girl, you haven't grown up. Because there's a lot of grown girls, there's a lot of grown boys. Which brings me to my next step. What is core to being hotel? What is core to being in the hotel community? First of all, what's the average age? Take a guess. What do you think the average age of our community is? Type in the chat. Tell me what you think our average age is in the Hotep community. What do you think that is? So, core to me, okay, is... My brain did a split. I'm sorry. So, on one side, I'm thinking about... Um, a mental maturity on the other side I'm thinking about spiritual maturity that's the split that my brain just did it was just like wait which way do you want to go right um, let's start with spiritual maturity so spiritual maturity is uh, very simply um, what would Jesus do and I'm not talking about Hotep Jesus it's just like the attitude like wh how would Jesus handle this situation right like how would God handle this situation how would a, a saint handle this situation. And if you looked at every single conflict and said, how would a saint, how would somebody who's Christ-like handle this situation? In that moment, you would invoke the power of a saint, of an angel. You'd have angelic superpowers to manage that situation. So people always talk about, you know, hey, Hotep Jesus, you handle that so well. You handle this so well. You handle it's because I take a second to first purge myself of the emotions I receive because like strong dad, I'm an emotional person. So when I said strong dad was emotional, that's not omitting me. I'm a very emotional person. Very, very emotional. The difference is um, I probably got 10 years on strong dad. Okay. When I was, you know, Strong dad's age, you know, probably just like strong dad. But as you get older and, you know, I'm on four kids now. He's on his first, right? And one thing kids are going to teach you is patience. Kids are going to teach you patience. And I coach kids uh, in sports and a team. And if that don't teach you patience, I don't know what will, right? So it's just time. Sometimes it just takes time. But the point is that um, I'm not perfect and I am emotional. And... I can put a cap on it or I cannot, right? For example, if you look at um, the conversation with MoFax before Sonny Johnson, that was me not putting a cap on it. That was me saying, I want people to see the imperfect me. I want people to see the New Jersey me. I want them to see the raw me so that they know that when I don't put a cap on some shit, this is what you might deal with. So it's not a shock when you see it, okay? Everybody tries to put on a mask. Every once in a while, you got to take that bitch off and show, up, show people who you really are, right? Then you can see me at other times where I'm able to put that cap on my emotion. Then there's physical maturity, right? And that's just how you handle yourself, period, right? Your mental maturity. This is just how you handle yourself, period. So what I'm saying is, if you are going to be a part of this community, if you are going to represent Hotep, Hotep Nation, men of order, especially men of order as well, you got to act like a man at all times, especially publicly. Whatever you do behind closed door, that's on you. I hope you still act like a man behind closed door. But... When you are in uh, the public town hall, that is social media, especially. You got to grow the fuck up. You got to grow the fuck up. OK. 
the 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 immaturity must be purged. Okay, the immaturity must be purged from you. We must. We are the last hope for people on the planet. There are probably other communities just like us, and we are all collectively the last hope. But we are a piece of that last hope for humanity. Okay, so when you enter this community. There is no. You cannot act like a bitch. Do not act like a bitch. It's not allowed. Do not act like a child. It's not allowed. Just don't do it. Control yourself. Control yourself. Especially if you're not a creator. If you don't create content and you are a part of the Hotep community, this is how most communities usually uh, develop. You have supporters and you have creators, right? The supporters support the creators and the creators create something for the supporters to actually support. And both roles are very important. You can't take one away and, 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 not, have the, and not have the other. You just can't do it. You need both, right? Both are equally important, right? So just because somebody's a content creator in Hotep Nation does not make them more important than, let's say, a Heather Harnett or anybody else in this community. Okay, so there is no hierarchy to Hotep Nation. The uh, perceived hierarchy in Hotep Nation, as we've begun to form this thing, is for organizational purposes and not hierarchical purposes. Although it takes on a hierarchical form, it is for organization purposes to make decision making easier. Simply put. That's all it's about. You have a natural pr proclivity to point out insurgents, then maybe you need to be in charge of watching for insurgents. You have a natural pr proclivity for physical fitness, then you need to head up physical fitness. And the opinions of both of those will always matter in all matters because you sit at the table. Okay? Now, with that being said, if you are not a content creator, you don't deal with the same problems that we do. You don't deal with the stress of having, um, uh, uh, I don't want to get into the specifics of the stress, but you don't deal with our stress, right? There is a lot of stress that comes with being a content creator outside of just creating the content, being judged on your content and having to deal with all the bullshit that comes along with being a content creator. So if you are not a content creator and you're not supporting the content creators, what's your purpose? You got to stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. There's plenty of people to troll on the Internet. Don't troll inside your own community. It's retarded. It's, 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 it's immature. Next thing I'm going to say is. Don't think you could be me and Uncle Hotep. I've known Uncle, known Uncle Hotep for close to 10 years now. Don't think you can have that type of relationship with somebody else in Hotep Nation that you've never met before and think you could have that type of rapport. You can't do it. Don't try to be us. We've developed that relationship over the years, and we know what lines not to cross with each other because we're both fathers. We're both mature, grown men. You see what I'm saying? Next thing I'm going to say in regard to that is I joke a lot. We joke a lot. But I don't joke with everybody. I don't. I only joke with people I know. Okay? Okay. The other part is, well, well, joking, period, requires rapport. If you want to joke with somebody, it requires rapport. If you don't have rapport with that person, then don't joke with them, right? It's just that simple. Also, some people ain't here for play play. Some people ain't here for jokes. Some people are here to be serious, get their shit off, and log the fuck off. So you might think that you could joke with X, Y, and Z, then you joke with this other person, 
and think that that person has to tolerate it because you see other people in Hotep Nation do it. No, that person is an individual and how they want to be treated is based upon how they want to be treated, their own personal creed, their own personal, you know, uh, set of um, borders or, or, or restraints for the public and everybody else. So don't think just because everybody in Hotep Nation jokes, 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 you could just joke with everybody in Hotep Nation. Nah, go joke with the people you know. Go joke with people you've met before. Go joke with people that joke with you. But don't try to joke with people that ain't here for jokes. You see what I'm saying? We got to tighten the fuck up. It's election season. It's grifting season. Everybody's life is on the line. We got to tighten the fuck up. Nobody's, nobody's in trouble. It's just that things need to be laid out. As a community grows, it, it grows. And as it grows, it's going to have growing pains. This is just very normal. But um, rules, need, rules sort of need to be set. And, and, and things need to be explicated. And, 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 and structure is going to uh, begin to form. But some people might not know what we are about. So every once in a while, I'm going to have to give a speech and tell people, if you're going to be a part of the community, here's what's expected of you. Because sometimes people don't know what the expectations are. They think it's just throw Hotep in your name, buy Apex, and you down. And it's just like, that's a good start. But Hotep is, at its very core, peace satisfaction uh, to be at rest. It even equals the tomb. So there's a lot of ancient spiritual energy around this concept of Hotep. And it, and, and, it, and it begins at your soul. It begins at your soul. And it begins at your character. It begins at your maturity. It begins at the vibratory frequency you resonate that affects other beings. When people talk about Hotep Jesus, what I hear is, you've helped me get better. You've inspired me. There was a point in my life where I trolled a lot on social media until I understood that, wait, it affects some people in a positive way, but some people in a negative way, which still makes me not a good person. So we got to tighten that the fuck up. I right, elevate, go higher, vibe high. You see what I'm saying? So you have to vibrate higher. That is one of our goals is to vibrate higher, to become the, 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 the icon of humanity, the, the example of what a man and a woman should be. When they when when people say, you know, how should a man be? I want people to say like the hoteps. When they say, how should a woman be? I want them to say like the hoteps. And then somebody goes, oh, I, OK, I get it. Without any explanation, I just want people to go, oh, OK, I get it. That makes sense. I love those guys. They're so fucking great. They're fit. They're mature. They create. They generate income. They help people. They help each other. They have families. They take care of their children. The women cook and make sandwiches. <laughs> so this is what we are. Okay? We're not clowns. We joke. But we are not clowns. We are very serious, professional, some of us academic people. And I want you to understand that. And I want you to start living your life like that. Whether you're a part of the Hotep community, it's your first time listening, 20th time listening. I want you to take these lessons and live your life like this. Be Christ-like. Um, Teresa, 199, super, thank you. We already hit our goal. You guys are freaking amazing. Jabari Judy says, State of the Hotep Nation speech was definitely needed. 
Yes, that's all that was. That's a state of Hotep Nation speech. Absolutely. Um, the Martian, I'm emotional. Also, uh, I've learned to control it better. It's it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey. It's it's very hard. Um, Kelson with the forty five dollar super. Hotep to everyone in attendance. Get those likes up. Word. Kelson, you the man, bro. Oh, this a real ho. This a real hotel, brother. You the man, bro. Help this hit his goal in just one shot. You the man. The Martian, are North African Arabs also African? No. Listen to what you just said. You said, are North African Arabs also African? No, they're Arab. <laughs> they come from the Arab Peninsula. It's that simple. We don't have to complicate things. Um, I don't have to. Actually, I was going to bring up the Arab Peninsula, but you guys know what the Arab Peninsula or the Arabian Peninsula is. Or Arabia is where Arabs come from. Arabs do not come from Africa. They come from um, the Tigris and the Euphrates. And what's the other? Um, what do you call those? Uh, when those three meet, I, it has a name for it. I'm flipping my mind at this point. But that's where they come from. Now, uh, over the centuries, they have invaded and taken over North and East Africa. And um, pe people may consider them African based upon governmental designations but we're talking about race and ethnicity we're talking about race and ethnicity we're talking about african and arab european asian in fact there is no hispanic in my world there is no hispanic in my world in my world um hispanic speaks spanish spanish comes from spain Spain conquered South America. South America was full of indigenous tribes, black tribes, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the reason why they tan, some of them, not all Hispanics tan, but the reason why they tan is, well, their mixture um, uh, in the Strait of Gibraltar. You have the Strait of Gibraltar. You have the Mediterranean Sea. This is why Italians tan, and it's merely because it's an admixture, just a mixture with Africans. Just that simple. Arabs are Caucasoids, not African. They might be. Well, technically, Caucasian is not a scientific term. It's an obsolete scientific term. So you can't even call Arabs Caucasoid. It's, a, it's an obsolete term. Scientifically. <sighs> the Egyptians had their own language before they adopted Arabic. We are talking uh, 4,000 years. Hotep is a part of the longest lasting language in history. This is true. This is true. All right. That being said, let's talk about Mayor Eric Adams. I have a full ass griff bag and I just have a family. We ain't going to get none of this shit. I'm not really mad at that. Um, a good stream's a good stream. You know what I'm saying? A good stream's a good stream. All of these things are evergreen topics that I see in the bank. These are all evergreen topics. So we'll talk about this stuff at some point in the future. Oh, you know what we got to do before I do anything? I got to geek out. Before we talk about Mary Eric Adams, I got to geek out. I'm sorry. You guys are going to have to deal with this. Um, but I got to geek out. I apologize in advance. But... um. Bryson released Bryson. Bryson released a a record that um this record um uh, this record hold on we're gonna have to go let's go to Lee Chess he 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 basically this is funny okay so really fast so um. He releases a record and it's a chess match and he's rapping and playing chess at the same time. Like he's calling out the move. So what I want to do is I want to actually put the game on the board here and, 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 um, so let's open up the analysis board. Okay. It's perfect on the screen. And I want to play the game and just see what position he set up. Cause I was trying to follow it. Now, the funny thing about this is because the devil 
was the white pieces and he was the black pieces, people took it as racist. And I didn't even peep that when I first heard the record. I was too busy trying to follow the game. So let's listen. Bryson, Bryson, you think you've overcome, but the war has only just begun. This is only the beginning of sorrows. How much more can you stand to lose when all is lost? But... Chess with the devil, he's white and I'm black, he plays E4, he hasn't revealed his attack. As I play the Kyro Khan, his children tries to distract with all the sex and all the sin they push on all of these apps. But before I collapse, perhaps I make my next move my best before I fall off the track. He goes D4, then advance, that's my chance to get back. Only fans model screaming for me to just chill and relax. A bottle of vodka appears, I use to sip that. I push the seat pond again, I cannot fall for your trap. Saying the bishop pit me in check, I've been waiting on that. Saying the knight protects the king, and you can't get me back. Saying, I'm a little right until them horns go off. He lit the me and said, well, that's your loss. I say you should look at what that costs. He said the Lord is not your boss. <laughs> what are you willing to give up? He takes, I takes, we make the exchange. He takes my pine on C5. He thought that I let it hang. Bring up the queen, that's a check. As I yell out God's name, I told him this for Yahweh. So don't think it's a game. He bops with the knight, okay? I pick up the palm. Serpents in my grass. Right now, I'm mowing the lawn. He brings out the other knight. If it's on, then it's on. I pin his knight to his queen. With my bitch, so we strong. Devil thought I was the old me. He dead, and my flesh can't control me. What's that? Yeah, the Holy Spirit told me that you at my feet, get below me. Ooh. He tried to send thoughts my way, but I blocked that. Don't you know I got a wife sitting? Yeah, I like that. He tried to entice me with porn, I don't watch that. And I got the hormone, I'm ready for combat. He want a queen tray, okay, let's get it. He chats with the knight as I bring back my bishop. The other knight to eat too, I don't know why he did it. I pushed the e palm, he pushed. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, I missed it. Wait, he did what? Took, he took. And then you, oh, you protect. Oh, 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 okay. He protected. All right. He protected the pawn. All right. And then what'd you do? To see pawn with the quickness. Let my pawn attack in this night. Wait, I missed something here. He chased with the knight as I bring back my bishop. The other knight to E2. I don't know why he did it. I oh, he played this move. Yeah, this is interesting. I don't know. What is he trying to do here? What is, what, what, maybe here? I don't know. I pushed the E pawn, he pushed the C pawn with the quickness. Now my pawn attacking this knight, he takes it back to F3, I know that we in the fight. I go to 97, now I think the timing is right. He takes his knight to G5, wait, now you on my sights. Push the F prime, you gonna give me something for free. He takes the knight back, hmm, well okay, let me see. Knight to C6, the pawn has to do something, no. Wait, what? He did what? Yeah, you played that, uh-huh. And then what'd you do? Free, he takes the knight back. Hmm, well, okay, let Oh, he played his knight back. Okay. Let me see. Knight to C6, the pawn has to do something, no E. He brings the bishop out the guard, and now I'm sensing defeat. G pawn the threatened bishop, now he has to retreat. To the G square, push the pawn again, it's my field of heat. He takes it to D. Okay, now the pawn looking sweet. Knight takes bishop. Wait, whoa, wait, what? <clears throat> he takes it to D. Oh, oh, you played the, the pawn move. Okay. D, okay. Not a pawn looking sweet. Knight takes bishop, takes pawn takes, boy, you weak. Saying what you're doing, cause it's time. And we know who wins, so you might as well resign. Guess not, cause we know you lead the blind. I'm a little right until them horns go off. He lit the me and said, well, that's your loss. I say you should look at what that costs. He said the Lord is not your boss. <laughs> oh, there's no checkmate. It's a really good position, though. It's a good position for Black. Black's definitely winning. He's got a solid center mass. Um, Probably going to castle long. Actually, you don't have to castle. Um, Funny thing about chess is... Uh, when the queens come off the board, you don't always have to castle. 
you know, developing plans look like this, 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 either here or here, back in this way. Interesting, interesting. All right, I just want to geek out real, real fast. Sorry, y'all. I know I'm lo losing some of y'all. Um. Uh, so yeah, I had to do that. I had to, I had to, I had to geek out really fast. When I heard the game being played, I was like, oh, I want to do this on stream and follow the game and see what it looks like. Um. All right, so let's go back. Mayor Eric Adams. Shout out to Bryce, a new album out. Demon Slayer. Go stream that. Um, all right, so uh, Eric Adams. Now, I got to tell you, Eric Adams walked into a brick wall. I should say ran full speed into a brick wall. Whoever this black woman attorney is, uh, somebody give me her name. I love this woman. I don't care if she's a Democrat or not. Oh, is this her name? Is this her here? Ah, oh, shit. She a tether. Ah, oh, she's a Brooklyn tether. Uh, what's this? Nigeria? What's this flag? Bahamas? Yeah, Bahamas. Nigerian and Bahamian. Um, we're going to dive into her, her, her politics later. But let's take a look. The federal monitor who is tasked with ensuring that NYPD is following the law conducted or, conducted under, under an who? analysis who? conducted an analysis that happened eight years ago but they're still here monitoring <laughs> okay. what you're doing and they said that you have brought back stop and frisk policies that are worse than they saw even during the Bloomberg era but more importantly they damn they brought stop and frisk back <laughs> oh shit Analyze the neighborhood safety. Out, show me that, show I can show you the, show, the report is said, available, and I know it's been available to you because your spokesperson has commented on it. I hear the accent. I hear the accent. I hear the accent. It's that Caribbean Brooklyn accent. They did an analysis of over yeah, 10 you precincts, can't, you can't keep putting 10 stuff different precincts. Factual, that is stuff. factual. There's a federal monitor reporting to Judge T. This is like a 140 IQ versus 100 IQ. This is just not a fair fight. Queen on it and presenting and what? information. Be, they every, said that, yes, listen, let me finish that, so you can peel it back. They conducted an analysis of 10 different precincts mm -hmm. and of every, of the stops of 10 different precincts, they found that 97% of them, by the way, of the neighborhood safety teams that were disbanded in 2020 because of their disproportionate abuse against black and Hispanic people that you revived, they analyzed 10 of those different neighborhood safety teams and found that they're conducting 97% of their stops on black and brown people and a quarter of them are unconstitutional. That's what the federal monitor said, not me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the same. So what's the play here? So the play here is very simple. Um, the Democrats wanted to tighten it up on um on crime. Unfortunately, you can't do that with a white face. So what they do is when they want to tighten up crime, they put a black face in. This is kind of a new strategy for them. But back in the day, they could, you know, get away with just doing it in a white face because we lived in a very white dominant society. Well, more dominant than it is now, I guess, in some ways at least psychologically, right? Where people are pushing back against racism and, and things like that. So, you know, the, the Democrats are like, all right, we're going to have to put a black face out there to go, you know, round these Negroes up so that it softens the blow, um, you know, and, 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 they, and they draw less criticism. Otherwise, What'll happen is they'll go, oh, we have a racist mayor. But because he's a black mayor, you can't say he's racist. So it sort of takes that card off the table. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's find another clip. I'm not going to watch the whole interview. I don't, I can't really like, I can't, I can't. I just, um, if, there were, if it was a 140 IQ versus a 140 IQ, I would have watched the entire thing. But I can't sit here and just watch him get slaughtered for 40 minutes. I'm going to get bored. All right, here's a good longer clip. We'll probably settle with this clip, and then I'll fill this show on with some other stuff afterwards. We'll get off of this. Uh, let's pull it up. Subway system. We have six felonies a day on our subway system out of four million riders. Mm -hmm. it, look at those numbers. Mm -hmm. our, our subway system is a safe system. 
and we put in a different additional thousand officers to do the high visibility to deal with the reality because safety is not only felt it's perceived mm-hmm. it, so if those six felonies we got to get rid of we clear we clear on that but people are back on our subway subway system but when you deal with specifically congestion prices a lot of people don't realize these are the city streets but we had no authority on it mm-hmm. albany passed the law and turned it over to the mta this is the mta's baby they should have allowed the city to be able to control how congestion pricing was done. So that $15, we were able to fight to get $100 million to deal with the environmental impact in the Bronx. We were able to fight to get uh, those who are shift brokers to get a discount, those who make less than $50,000 to get a discount. But this was a bill that came out of Albany. So you don't agree with it, or do you agree with it? No, I agree we got to deal with something with the congestion in our city, but you don't pass on the course of that on low income New Yorkers, Mm -hmm. or those who have to come to Manhattan. You may have to have uh, going to your chemotherapy, and this is the doctor you have to go to. You should not be hit over there because of Or people that live in the area. They're saying that that people that actually live in the area, when they drive, if they got to drive uptown to the doctor, or they got to drive, they get charged too. Yeah, but I'm not feeling with people that live in the area. Mm -hmm. Central Manhattan, east up, south of 60th Street, has the best transportation system on the globe. You got Crosstown trains, you have south and north trains. To implement the laws that are down here. Yeah, I think you're right that there is a difference between perception and fact and how people feel about safety and the way people feel about the subways. And I think it's your own rhetoric about the subways that has a lot to do with why people feel scared, despite the fact that millions of people ride the subway every day without incident. But you've continued to fear monger about crime in the subways. You've added 2,000 police officers, despite the fact that you've acknowledged that the subways are not that dangerous. And I think there is, you're right. And poor New Yorkers should not be the ones who bear the brunt of this, but they will if they already have the subway being turned into a place that they have to fear, that there's a National Guard, that there's a hyper visibility of police, that they're trying to stop people with certain uh, records from even using them. And now you have this congestion price. So how do you reconcile that? Well, let's let's go before. Uh, first of all, I would love to give me, give me the quotes on my rhetoric because I'm, I'm lost on that. Can you give me the quotes? Oh, that on you which, fear monger yeah, about yeah, the subways? Yeah, give me oh, the... you've consistently done that since the day one of your administration. One of the first things you did was add a thousand officers to the subway because you claimed that the subways are under Rideable you and Hokel did this and said how dangerous it is, and you recently did that when you deployed the National Guard. Sister, but that's not, that wasn't my question, Queen. My question was, what was my fear mongering? What did I say? You I continuously say, I, I could point to a number of videos and quotes and everything from you, but you've said repeatedly that the subways are dangerous, that New York is dangerous. You complain about crime relentlessly. So what I'm saying to you is, if you are saying that New York is the safest city, it's one of the safest big cities in this country, which is true, and you're recognizing that the subway stations are, in fact, not half as dangerous as they're presented to be, I'm saying, how do you reconcile how your rhetoric has played into people's fear? Okay. And, and, I, and, I, and not even just rhetoric, I would say the actions, because she, she's right. If, if you tell us... Which is different. Which is different. But you know, <laughs> it's the same thing, though. If you put 1,000 police officers in the subway, 2,000 mm-hmm. police officers in the subway, that don't make us feel safe. We think something's wrong if you're doing okay. that. Let, 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 let me, let me, first, let me peel back again, because you got to always peel back this stuff, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, oftentimes how you depict in the media that I don't control is how people interpret you. I didn't put the National Guards in the subway. The governor did. I know, I but I know what you said. But you said, but you said, Eric. You, you, never... you stood with Governor Kathy Hochul and you co-signed that decision. You did. And I'm not saying this as someone who's following social media. I'm saying that as an attorney in the city and an activist who follows everything that you do. Yeah, if you, uh, I'm glad you do. Because mm-hmm. then you realize how I turned the city around if you follow everything I do. You realize I would, that I... I would say no, but we could get okay, to that yeah, next. Yeah. <laughs> Loosen up your time, man. Yeah, it'll be a long day. <laughs> Listen, and I enjoy every moment right, of it. That's... <laughs> I want to go to her profile. I want to vet her. Let's see what what she said. Let's do Trump and see what she said about Trump. Let's just start there. Let me tell you how abolitionists lose all principle when it comes to Donald Trump, right? My best friend over here grinning from air to air at Trump getting indicted tomorrow. So she's like, no, I want to see him in cuffs. I'm like, yes, it's happening tomorrow. She's like, no, no, I don't want them. I don't want him to surrender himself. I want them to issue a no knock warrant, kick his door in, Sparta kick him in the chest. <laughs> But really, no. <laughs> okay, she's got personality. She's got a sense of humor. 
Okay, so she's definitely an anti-Trumper. All right, let's see what she says about Biden. Let's see. See where she's at. America loves electing ancient white men who live inexplicably long. So I'm not going to say Joe Biden's too old to run again. However, I did assess the ways he, Trump, and DeSantis are all deeply invested in propaganda and mass incarceration. Okay. I generally understand the fear of Joe Biden losing to Trump and the danger of Republican administration poses, but it's another thing entirely to say Joe Biden, a man financially aiding a genocide, is doing a remarkably a remarkable job by doing so. And I say with, uh, without malice towards you. All right. So she's, she's on, so she's pro Palestine. And I'm not gonna say pro Palestine, but she's, she definitely ain't choosing Israel. Um, 30 years ago, he says right here, say no to, to, to D.C. crime bill. 30 years ago, Joe Biden gave us a 1994 crime bill responsible for mass incarceration of so many black people. Now D.C.'s black mayor, black woman mayor, introduced a new crime bill that would allow cops to kill suspects, arrest anyone in groups of two or more. Okay, 2020, she says here, I want to be clear, you should vote for Biden and Kamala. It's a lie to pretend there's no meaningful difference between them and Trump. You just reserve the right to not be excited about it. All right, so she was wrong on that. She's a black woman. I kind of expect, you know, most black women pretty much um, predisposed to um, the Democratic Party. All right, now, last test. Now, this is the final test. I'm going to put Hotep in. This is the only thing that matters. What is her opinion on Hotep? We didn't check out what she felt about Trump. Any predictions in the chat? Any predictions on the chat? So what she felt about Trump. You saw what she felt about Biden. How do you think? Thumbs up if you think it's going to be positive, negative, thumbs, thumbs down, zero if you think it's neutral. What do you think is going to happen? I'm scared. I don't, I don't want to find out. Shout out to my rumblers rumbling. I'll see you. Here it goes. Uh, I don't want to see. Oh, please, Lord. We're about to say a prayer first. Lord Jesus, Heavenly Mother in, 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 in he Heavenly Mother in Heaven, please make sure she's not anti hotel. Please make sure she doesn't say anything crazy about the hotel. I'm in. I'm in hotel. Let's see. Oh, uh, I don't know what blows me more. Coons or women who defend misogyny and hotep shit. Uh, Every defense attorney, including myself, knew Tory going to trial was a bad idea and all his defenses were not sensical, but he preferred to follow the legal strategies presented by hotep headquarters. Oh, no. <sighs> I knew it. I knew it. That's why I was afraid, because I knew it. I know it. This is 2023, too. I knew it. There always seems to be a problem trying to like slash support celebrities. It always feels like they always turn out to be a hotep, a coon, a misogynist, a racist, a homophobe. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. All right. Let's see. Let's see how far gone she is. Let's type in trans. Because right now I'm just getting angry black woman from her. Oh, God. Imagine your trans employee quitting because of your rampant transphobia and still misgendering. The oh, baby. No. <sighs> I just saw that ignorant transphobic video Jess Hilarious put out and enough. Cis women are not the only people who experience menstruation. So do trans men and binary people, but it's irrelevant because your womanhood is not threatened by the inclusion of others. Oh, oh no. <sighs> oh, 
I want to cry. I want to cry. We need a Hotep University ASAP. We need a Hotep. Yeah, she's excommunicated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we need a Hotep University ASAP because college is like damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? If you don't go, you don't have enough education to apply for certain positions. If you do go, you're educated enough to apply for those positions, but you're fucking brainwashed with all this fucking liberal progressive bullshit so now you're just a smart idiot instead of being an idiot that's smart Ugh. it's not it's not i can't say it's black women what i can say is that black women um are some of the most they call it educated. I'll say um, believe in formal education highly. They, they highly regard it. They, they think it means something. They think that paper on the wall means something. Um, and they enroll in college at a higher rate than most people, I believe. At least that was a stat from a few years back. They enroll in college at a higher rate per capita than the other rate. But all that means is that they're just signing up to get indoctrinated and all these schools have been infiltrated. Um, so for people to understand what happened was, I've done this before. I'm going to do it really fast this time. Um, you got to understand what happened with the black community. And in order to do that, we got to start right here. So the black community had leaders like Khalid Muhammad. Okay. Now, Khalid Muhammad, as you can see here, dies in um, 2001, right? And then uh, what emerges from the rubble is a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Barack Obama. And Barack Obama takes office in 2009, okay? So some years later. And basically what happened was there was an eradication of... Let's see if there's, I think we saw this last time that um, there's a wiki page for this. At least I thought we had one. Um, how did I find that again? The, there was like a page on. Um, so we had something called, you know, the conscious movement and out of the conscious movement, you get, you get like five different factions. You get your, um, you get your Hoteps. That's basically Egypt is king. You get your Moors, and that's basically the Moorish Empire is king. You get your uh, Hebrew Israelites, and that's basically the twelve tribes are king or some shit. Then you got your, um, your five percenters, your Nuwapians, and then you know, uh, whatever uh, all your Pan Africanness, right? Uh, yeah, you got your Pan-Africanists. And sometimes these groups share a Pan-African view. But this is very much um, a community that debated and shared you know, scholarly materials. And uh, there was um, growth that was happening with the black mind. And there was growth happening with education and self-education. However, these groups were slash are homophobic. All, I would say all five of these groups, the conscious movie, the conscious movie as a whole was quote unquote homophobic. They didn't go out and actively, you know, try to attack hom homos. Some of them maybe even been cordial to uh, homosexuals, but we weren't accepting that shit. OK, just like ancient Egypt wasn't accepting that the conscious community wasn't accepting that as a norm. OK, as a norm. And. um other things that could not intercept our groups, right? Other ideologies of progressivism that would not intercept our groups. The other thing about these groups were they were highly capitalist. Okay, these this conscious movement was capitalist. Um, they believed in um, production and exchange, right? And then Barack Obama comes along, and things are still budding. Things are still doing well, 
And then we got smacked with Black Lives Matter, right? And Black Lives Matter is where everything took a turn, right? Where it became, it started off as a slogan. Many of us got behind it. In the early days, I got behind it because it was just a slogan. And then somebody stole the slogan and turned it into an organization. And um, I remember the first time seeing that. Well, actually, the first time I, I recognized it was an organization was when I was online spewing my rhetoric and somebody came to me and I shouldn't say, actually it was the day I got canceled for questioning DeRay, right? And I got canceled and um I kept clicking on the profiles of people that were like trying to cancel me and all of it had like the rainbow flag and I'm like, this is black people with the rainbow flag? Like damn it's a lot of gay motherfuckers. And, it, and all of them had Black Lives Matter and BLM in their bio. I'm like, fuck. And then somehow I landed on the Black Lives Matter website, and that's when I first pointed out that, and I showed you this video the other day, Black Lives Matter is the gay agenda. This is when I, you know, what I discovered in 2015. And I started telling people about this. Back then, you know, even my own family told me I was crazy. Today, my family's like, yo, What's up with all the gay shit? And I'm like, yeah, I told you this like a decade ago that that's, this is what was coming. This was coming from Black Lives Matter. And I told you a decade ago, do not support Black Lives Matter because it's not for black people. It's a gay movement. And they sort of did a bait and switch where you, were, you thought you were supporting Black Lives Matter, which was um, the murder of black men. And, but when you check the website, it said, the first thing I saw under villages section, it said mothers, parents, children. And you know me, I'm a very, when I read, I look for details and I'm um, detail oriented. And, and I saw, I was like, wait, why didn't they say fathers? Or they could have just said parents and children, right? But they said mother, parents, and children. And they got clicking around and I saw trans in there. And I was like, oh shit. This is not that. This is not black people. But the damage had already been done. Millions of dollars, billions of dollars had already been dumped into this organization. Um, people had already bought into DeRay McKesson. They already bought into Sean King. And, and, and the black mind got co-opted. And in order to do that, they unleashed a black feminist contingent uh, in cooperation with Hollywood to destroy this thing called Hotep because they knew that the people in the conscious community use that word Hotep. So they, they tried to castigate it and denigrate it and destroy that term. And we, we reclaimed it and we brought it back to it. But as you can see, so what we're facing is a billion dollar agenda to swap out the black mind. They took the black mind or the African mind. They took this mind and swapped it out with a Black Lives Matter mind. And, 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 and the way they did that was um, uh, 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 through, uh, let's not say that. Let's just say some of our leaders uh, passed away and died. Some disappeared. Um, and then they gave us new leaders, Barack Obama, the black community sort of. Uh, fell asleep because they said, oh, we got a black president, so all is well now. And uh, we sort of fell asleep at the wheel when uh, Barack Obama became president. And um, while all this is happening, you start to have um, a revolution in the university that was pushing this uh, cultural Marxism in the universities. So the kids were going in with one mindset and leaving, believing that um, the, the, the struggle of, uh, the African diaspora, um, was a shared struggle with, uh, people with different sexual preference traits, people with different gender traits and conflated that. And then what they did was they began this campaign of, if you don't support this trans if you don't support this gay, then you're not pro-black at all. So it sort of superseded everything. 
uh, when really it should be, hey, let's start at, are you pro-black? Cool. Then maybe the next layer you go, all right. But what I used to say was, you know, if you make them put respect on your black, you ain't got to make them put respect on your gender or your sexual preference. Um, and, 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 and honestly and truly, the black community never really had um, a homophobic problem. We weren't accepting of it. The conscious community was warning people about the agenda coming. Um, but we, we weren't like actively attacking gays. That was more of a, a white people thing. Um, in fact, I think it was the Genovese family. Um, yeah. So it was the Italians that protected the gays first. The Italians protected the gays first. These are just historical facts. I won't, let's not say first, but they were one of the groups that protected the gays. And you can see right here, it says, uh, Anna became the Italian-American mobster's second wife just a few weeks after her first husband was mysteriously murdered. Now, apparently, her husband found out she was a lesbian and, uh, you know, I think hit her or something like that, and then he was mysteriously murdered. It says, the businesswoman ran drag clubs and gay bars in Manhattan, reportedly having a number of uh, lesbian affairs. And this is... Uh, Anna Genovese, okay? But it was the Genovese, in New York, it was illegal to practice homosexuality at this time. And it was the Genovese family that basically said, all right, you got those laws in the book, but when the gays go downtown and start partying, you better not shut that shit down because, well, we're the mob and you know what the mob does. So um, this concept of homophobia was actually a government thing. It was not a people thing. It was a government thing. People generally, uh, as we all know from anecdotal evidence, tend to be sensible most of the time and tend not to really care, you know, what you do behind closed doors. It was the government that's always concerned with what you do behind closed doors. Um, so they had buggery laws on the books, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, that's that's how we got here. Um Francisco Sanchez, he says, first rule of any occupation is that all movements are for personal, are, are for power retention. Right. Those who control nations switch from one pawn, feminism, to another, racism, to keep the sheep confused. Normalcy is a fallacy to these people. Yeah. Well said. Well said. So, um, uh, it's sad to see, you know, such an exquisite takedown of Eric Mayer uh, by this woman, but... I'd love to have a conversation. I'd love to have a conversation with her. Try to like level with her. I don't think I can. She seems like she carries too much animus, but um, I would love to try. I think it would be. Um, let's do a vote. Let's do a vote really fast. Um, what's next? Uh, phone calls. Drudge. Or more Griff bag. Uh, let's see what the let's see let's see how the audience wants to continue this show. Victor, what up, yo? It seems black men are against the gay shit, but overall, would you say the black community is a matriarchy? Overall, I would say the black community is a matriarchy. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I would definitely say so. Absolutely, I would say so. Want more HJ break breakdowns? Everybody's voting more Griff bag. More Griff bag? It's heavy on the Griff bag. All right. Um, host her versus Sonny? Absolutely not. Uh, Sonny's going to slaughter her. Um, I I'm going to have to, I'd have to manage the conversation myself. I'd have to hold myself together. So there's no way I'd be able to hold myself and Sonny together. Um, all right. Let's go. Let's go in the Griff bag. Audience says they want more Griff bag. Let's give them more Griff bag. Um, I should make y'all go big brain. Let's start here. Let's start here. Let's go right here. I, I love this. This clip is absolutely phenomenal. 
almost brings tears to my eyes. Let's take a look. Whoops, sorry, I'm in the wrong window. Let's pull this up right here and then we'll press, hold on. I just want y'all to notice the fez. You see the fez right there? Where you see enlightened black people, you will always see a hotel. And that's why I don't take steps to denigrate Moors. I respect all of the intellectual practices of the African diaspora. And I like the Moors. I don't agree with on everything and I don't follow everything they say, but I appreciate them. You'll always see. And it, so this would be a hotel. Right. This would be a I would call it a Moorish hotel. That's what I would call it. Now, he would not maybe not appreciate that or understand it even because well, we live on the Internet and he probably does not. He probably lives on Facebook, maybe. Go red. No more blue, no matter who. So they're chanting no more blue, no matter who. No more blue, no matter who. Is what they're chanting. And in a way, this breaks my heart. In a way, this breaks my heart because I just hope they never get Twitter. Like, I know these people are older, so they're never going to be on Twitter, which is I'm just so thankful they don't have a Twitter. Because if they got a Twitter, this wouldn't be possible, right? And that's why I say, like, you know, Republicans, oh, black people don't know it's too stupid. They keep voting Republican. I'm like, we're not stupid. We know what's going on. The only people that are stupid are the Republicans. The Republicans are stupid. Black people aren't stupid. We vote for who we see. Where's the Republican candidate? Where are they? You know, I mean, black people go to vote and they say there's no Republican on the ballot. And people say, oh, they don't vote. They didn't have a choice. They didn't have a choice. You didn't run them. You didn't give them no money. I just showed you the other day that the Republican candidate had less than 500 followers on Twitter for Baltimore. They didn't talk about he's a DEI mayor. I'm like, everybody that ran was black. How was that DEI? Everybody that ran that was, was black. So it just breaks my heart because a lot of the grifters, obviously they're three-letter agency ops, have chosen... Um, a racist path uh, over a righteous path. Let's go back in the back. We got more. We got more. The people said they want more Griff back. We got more. So I, I thought that was beautiful. I'm just, I just hope they never get a Twitter. People are asking for the big brain stuff. So let's give them the big brain. Check this shit out. I didn't, I didn't connect to some dots, y'all. I connected some dots today and I connected it like several hours after I posted this tweet. So uh, I titled this uh, post here, Crypto Cringe in Congress. So House reps want to combine the anti-CBDC bill with other bills that seek to regulate stable coins in the crypto industry, according to Politico. And I said, this is a huge blunder created by Democrats whose only argument is what China does it. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to bring the article up so you don't say, you know, Hotep Jesus, you're making this stuff up. You, know, you misinterpret it. I'm going to show you right here and right in the article. Um, let's go here. So you see right here, it says, uh, now half a dozen lawmakers, aides and lobbyists say house conservatives are discussing a vote on the legislation alongside McHenry's flagship crypto bills, which would govern stable coins and a broader crypto industry. They want to potentially maybe couple these bills together. 
So it says one proposed plan, move Emmer CBDC legislation to the House floor at the same time as one or both of the crypto bills, said one Republican uh, lawmaker. The thinking is that uh, without it, any Republican not in the House Financial Services Committee will shy away from voting yes on crypto out of concerns. That's right here. If the bills are combined, okay, I'm not making this stuff up, not Mr. Interpreting. It says, if the bills are combined, it would risk isolating the few Democrats who are supportive of McHenry's other legislation. So basically, it's like some Democrats are like, we need to, we need to clamp down on crypto regulation, right? F, uh, SBF, FTX, we got to clamp down on crypto regulation. But some of those Democrats are also like, we're anti-CBDC. Right? This is the House we're dealing with, not the idiots in the Senate. This is CBDC, right? So they're like, we're against the CBDC. So what, what they want to do is they want to, or potentially could combine the bill, right? Now let's look at what Democrats say before I tell you uh, my epiphany. Hold on, let me find it. No. Um, or is it in the, it might be in the other article. Uh, uh, yeah, it's in the, um, it's in the Forbes article. Hold on. Uh, right here. Let's go to the Forbes article. So it's in the Forbes article. This is titled CBDC Prohibition is Gaining Momentum. And even Forbes, like, that's not a fair headline. This is a propaganda headline because uh, that's not what's happening here. This looks like a shot in the foot to the CBDC bill. Um, let me show you what Democrats are saying. First of all, look at the image they use on this article. CBDC Prohibition is Gaining Momentum. And the article uses a symbol of the Chinese flag, <laughs> right? Which is kind of clever uh, from the person that did it because he's trying to say, you know, we're basically becoming um, China. So right here, um, Rep. Stephen Lynch, Democrat out of Massachusetts, thinks that stopping the Fed from launching a CBDC does not equate to sticking our head in the sand, which is a good point. Um, hold on. Just want to make sure you guys see the arguments that the Dems are making. It's a really shitty argument, too. Hold on. Let me put this in. All right, let's go here. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So again, they, they talk, they try to compare us to the ECB, uh, European Central Bank. And it's true. The European Central Bank has not established any framework. They are establishing a rule book. That's true. Um, then they say some shit about it's a fundamental right. That's the fucking financial inclusion bullshit. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, all right, it's probably in another article. But basically, the, 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 Demo the common Democrat artic um, argument is everybody else is doing it, so we should. And that's just never, that's never a good reason. That's never a good reason to do anything. Oh, we should do it because such and such is doing it. Well, what, what are the benefits? You know, you can weigh the pros and cons here or not. All right, let's go back in the back. Uh, I got to play this clip for you. This clip is fucking classic. Let's pull this up. I love this. This is uh, South America here, Guyana. Shout out to my Guyanese people. Let's take a big picture look at what's going on here. Over the next uh, decade, two decades, it is uh, expected that there will be $150 billion worth of oil and gas extracted off your coast. It's an extraordinary figure. But 
think of it in practical terms, that means, according to many experts, more than two billion tonnes of carbon emissions will come from your seabed, from those reserves, and be released into the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you as a head of state... Now, I'm going to show you, yesterday somebody asked me, what's black black? The gentleman here is black black, right? And Europeans have a, um, a certain decorum about them where they, you know, they believe that you should always handle situations politely and all this other shit. And they don't believe in raising their voice and all this other bullshit that came out of London and the Puritan experience. But black black doesn't operate like that. And I don't think it should. Fuck all that shit. We come with fire and brimstone. They went to the cop in Dubai. Let me stop Dubai. you right there. Let me stop you right there. Do you know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined? A forest that stores 19.5 gig. They got a forest the size of England and Scotland combined. Remember I was telling you about how small fucking England is and that, that whole island? It's really a small little piece of shit, which is their advantage to controlling the globe. Having small numbers is actually an advantage because you have small numbers, it's easier to organize. Let's go back. Gigatons of carbon, a forest that we have kept alive, a forest that we have kept alive. Does that give you the right? No, Does no, that no, no, give no, you I, the that, right that, to release that, all of this carbon? Right. Again, just rude. You know, the, the, the British, they have all this fucking decorum about themselves. But the moment you're about to make a really good point, they got to cut you off. So they, they practice, you know, the British, they practice a certain decorum about themselves up until a certain point when you're about to create some disillusionment. Does From that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change? I am going to lecture you on climate change. Because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, mm. that the people of Ghana has kept alive. Guess what? We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. And guess what? Even with our greatest exploration of the oil and gas resource we have now, we will still be uh, net zero. Guyana will still be net zero. With all our exploration, a couple of we'll points. still be net zero. No, no, there's no, no powerful, no, powerful no, no, words, no, no, no. Mr. President. Well, 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 but a, a I, I'm not completed as yet. I am not finished as yet. Mm. I am just not finished as yet because this is the hypocrisy that exists in the world. We, the world, in the last 50 years has lost 65 percent of all its biodiversity. We have kept our biodiversity. Are you valuing it? Are you ready to pay for it? When is the developed world is going well, to pay for it? Or are you, you in the pockets? You, are you in the pockets of those who have damaged the environment? Are you in the pockets? Are you and your system in the pockets of those who destroyed the environment through the industrial revolution and now lecturing us? Are you in their pockets? Are you paid by them? Are you paid right, to keep right, their are you paid by them? These corrupt Englishmen destroy everything in their path. Then the minute you discover you got some oil, they like, hey, 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 don't you start pulling that oil out the water. Don't you start drilling. Hey, 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 now we don't want competition. We want to be the only ones. We're trying to we're trying to go electric. Don't you start increasing your GDP? Crazy. Crazy. I love that clip. That clip is classic. Shout out to Haram Life. Haram Life put that on my desk today. Shout out to Haram Life. Appreciate you. Did I missed the super chat. No, I got him. Thought I missed. Um all right, let's check the drudge. Let's check the drudge. I, I think I, oh, what else do I have in the bag? Hold on, let me just see what else I got in the bag and see if I'm in the mood to talk about that shit. Is this something I, I really want to talk about in here? Let me see. Uh, okay, yeah. Nah, I really don't want to talk about that. No, nah, I don't want to talk about that. Ooh, we could talk about this. Now, there's going to be some pauses in here. I'm going to have to look up some shit. But Elon Musk is full of shit. Okay. Elon Musk is full of fucking shit. I forgot about this one. I could do a fucking. I could do two, three hours on this. 
I'm going to try and do this as fast as possible. So this is just pure cap. This is what Mo, Mo Fax would call white supremacy. Um, uh, uh, I would call it um, either ignorance or blatant lying. Okay. And this has nothing to do with black people. It just has to do with the fact that it's just false history. Okay. And, and this, is, this is also bloviation. This is pandering to the red whites because uh, they're too ignorant to know the truth about the world. They haven't done their studies. They don't know how the uh, Western Civ was developed. Uh, so they don't know shit from shit. Okay. So uh, Elon Musk is, says here, uh, modern Western civilization has extraordinary empathy compared to its power. <laughs> oh, fucking God. That first line got me like, yo. Even when he, even when he tries to say compared to its power, it's still a false statement. Empathy? Western civilization doesn't even have empathy for its own citizens. Western civilization doesn't give a fuck about the people in England. They don't give a fuck about the people in, in, in the United States. They don't give a fuck about the people in Canada. Canada is living through a communist regime under Trudeau. What empathy are you talking about? You're talking about the empathy that, that, that came through with the pandemic with, with fake news? Like, wait, what, what the fuck is he talking about? Then he goes on to say, this is arguably its greatest weakness. What? Let's go to what he's trying to refer to. Let's, 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 cause I hadn't looked at this, right? So it looks like some back and forth here with Gad said, so let's, let's try and, you know, be fair here. All right. So freeloading migrant influencer mocks us taxpayers who work like slaves while waving cash in latest videos. All right, so if we're starting there, that tells you right there, that's not empathy for Western civilization. That's not empathy, period. If you go to a foreign nation and fuck it up and then say, hey, but you can come stay with me. Like, imagine I come to your house and I go, I walk in your house, I blow the shit up, I fuck your shit up, I steal a bunch of your shit, and I go, hey, I got a bedroom in the back. I got a bedroom in the basement. I got a bedroom in the attic. I mean, it's the least fucking thing I can do. Gas has said, uh, this is not unlike when I've previously been told by noble Arabic speaking immigrants that the West is aching to a woman to be mounted. Wow. I wrote an article recently on cultural theory of mind, specifically uh, that the West lacks it. The West thinks that some of the values it views as laudable will be perceived by others similarly, whereas in many instances, these are viewed as signs of weakness, right for exploitation. Uh, Elon says, I favor empathy, but the assumption that empathy will always be reciprocated is false. Uh, Shep Joel here says, uh, and there are many parasitical strategies that use a person's empathy against them. Sometimes these develop into entire political uh, slash ideological movements where the uh, population's empathy becomes an attack vector that the unscrupulous can exploit for gain. That sounds like African people to me, but let's continue. So let's break down uh, what Elon here said. He says, with the nuclear bomb, America could have subjugated every nation on earth with ease. Oh my fucking God. (laughs) Yo, this dude just know y'all dumb. He knows the red whites are dumb. Which is why he can say shit like this. And then the rest of them in the, in the comments, you know, they just want to, they want to retweet from Elon. So they'll just ride with it. You know what I mean? They, they, they suck Elon's dick for Elon bucks and, you know, bow to the master. America could have subjugated every nation on earth with ease with the nuclear bomb. I thought that's what they did. I could have sworn that's what they did. Hitler and Stalin would uh, certainly, uh, Hitler and Stalin would certainly have done so. Now, this is where things are about to get spicy, okay? Instead, America helped rebuild Germany and Japan. This is where we're going to spend our time right here. 
America helped rebuild Germany and Japan. Okay? There is no historical precedent for a nation with so much power helping rather than destroying its defeated enemy. Okay? Now, the reason why he's able to get this off is because people don't understand civilizations. They don't understand war. They don't understand conquering. And this is something that has uh, been developed over uh, many millennia. So you have two cases, right? You have the barbarian, and then you have the sophisticated uh, warrior tribe, right? So the barbarian tribe uh, seizes a village, burns everything to the ground. Books, people, uh, women, children, crops, everything, burn it to a smoldering mist. OK. The sophisticated warrior tribe says. We defeat their army. Then we co-opt their army and make those POWs a part of. Our contingent, we may, we may even make them their own contingent. The Arab world is known notorious for doing this. They take captured slaves and then they send them into war to fight. Right. And some of them can earn their freedom. This is a sophisticated warrior tribe, right? They also say, and, and, and Alexander the Great was good, was good at this as well as he was very good at um, uh, winning the war while maintaining the culture of whoever it is that he was conquering, right? In fact, so much so that his own people started to hate how he would take on the culture of the other civilizations, whether it was uh, Egypt or Persia, whatever it was, he took in, he, he respected everybody's culture and he left things intact. When he fought Darius, right? Darius people left his wife behind. Alexander didn't kill the wife. He married her. Which is an embarrassment to, to Darius. But he kept the wife and I think it was the sister or something like that. He kept them well fed and whatever, whatever. But he, he, he told his people, we're going to they are royalty in their land. We are going to treat them with respect. This is sophisticated warrior tribes. Let's take a selfish look at it. When you conquer a land and they have um, industry, it could be agriculture, it could be mining, whatever it may be. If they have industry existing, does it make sense to destroy that industry or does it make sense to co-opt it and own it? The answer is obvious. It's a rhetorical question. You want to keep the society intact so that you're not expending resources restarting that civilization. If I level Japan to the ground and there's nobody left, I now have to repopulate. I now have to restart the agriculture. I have to restart each and every industry. Not only that, I lose the skills of the people in that land. I lose the wisdom of the people in that land, the people that are say, hey, if you go too far this way, you're going to get hit with a tsunami. So don't build that far. You're going to lose the religious intelligence, the intellectual intelligence of the people. So when the United States does what it does, it understands as an intellectual warrior tribe, a warrior tribe with wisdom that you do not eradicate your enemies. You take possession of them. This is not empathy. This is selfishness. This is part of colonization. Otherwise, you have to do too much work to reap the benefits of the war you just won. Why would you win a war and then destroy the spoils of your war? That makes absolutely no sense, Elon Musk. Why are you lying to people, you fucking charlatan? Now let's dive into books. Intellectual capital, there you go. Now let's dive into the books. Okay. America 
helped rebuild Japan, uh, Germany and Japan. I want to paste that right into the thing. Let's go here. I want to, I want to just paste that right into Google, that exact statement, just to see what Google said. Right? I want to see all the fake news. Then we'll dissect it little by little. After World War II, the United States helped rebuild the defeated nations of Germany and Japan into new democratic nations. Into new democratic nations. Basically, they want to install democracy. The rebuilding took many years and cost billions of dollars. These efforts are the two great success stories in nation building. Okay. Let's go here. Uh, how did the U.S. help rebuild Germany? The Marshall Plan. Everybody see that? So let's hold on. Pull something up. Let's pull it up. Hold on. Hold on. Why is it not playing? Hold on. I'm looking for something. I told you I'm going to need... Sometime. And hold on. Let me just do a quick. Okay. I mean, there's so much here. I don't even. All right. I'm going to just throw this. I'm going to just throw this on your screen and we're just going to go right into it. My book. Oh, you can see it. It's on the screen. Boom. Perfect. Um, so it's my book, Patriot Report, Unmasked Conspiracy and Money War, the uh, section on World War II. I could probably just drop us off anywhere in here and it's going to be something that'll debunk what the fuck he said. Um, let's start here. Um, January 23rd, diary entry by Ambassador Dodd questions the Standard Oil and Germany connection. Here's what he says. The Standard Oil Company of New York, the parent company of the vacuum, has spent 10 million marks in Germany trying to find oil resources and building a great refinery near the Hamburg Harbor. Engelbrecht is still boring wells and finding a good deal of crude oil in the Hanover region, but he had no hope of great deposits. He hopes Dr. Schott, Schacht will subsidize his company as he does some German companies that have found no crude oil. The vacuum spends all its earnings here, employs 1,000 men, and never sends any of its money home. I could give him no encouragement. Okay, let's, go, let's, just, let's hop into something else here. Quigley. I don't even know what this says. Let's get into it. The apex of the system, this is Carol Quigley, Tragedy and Hope. The apex of the system was to be the bank for international settlements in Basel, Switzerland. A private bank owned and controlled by the world's central banks, which were themselves private corporations. Each central bank in the hands of men like Montague Norman of the Bank of England, Benjamin Strong of the New York Federal Reserve Bank, Charles Rist of the Bank of France, and Hallmar Schott of the Reichsbank, sought to dominate its government by its ability to control treasury loans to manipulate foreign exchanges, to influence the level of economic activity in the country and to influence cooperative politicians by subsequent economic rewards in the business world. Let's continue. I just want to make sure we get. This is from. Um, elimination of German resources for war hearings before a subcommittee of the subcommittee on military affairs. Okay. This is from Anthony Sutton, Wall Street and the rise of Hitler. Let's see what it says. The United States accidentally played an important role in the technical arming of Germany. Although the German military planners had ordered and persuaded manufacturing corporations to install modern equipment for mass production, neither the military economists nor the corporations seem to have realized the full extent what that meant. Their eyes were opened when two of the chief American automobile company built plants in Germany in order to sell in the European market without the handicap of ocean freight charges and high German tariffs. American companies setting up 
in Germany. Germans were brought to Detroit. Germans were brought to Detroit. Germans were brought to Detroit to learn the techniques of specialized production of components and of straight line assembly. When they saw what caused further reorganization and refitting of other key German war plans. No, what they saw caused further reorganization and refitting of other key German war plans. So when they came here, well, I'll just continue reading because it says it here. The techniques learned in Detroit were eventually used to construct the dive bombing Stukas at a later period. IG Farben representatives in this country enabled a stream of German engineers to visit not only plane plants, but others of military importance in which they learned a great deal that was eventually used against the United States. In 1934, Germany only produced 300 tons of natural petroleum products and less than 300,000 tons of synthetic gasoline. A decade later, with the transfer of hydrogenation patents and technology from Standard Oil of New Jersey to IG Farben, Germany produced about six and a half million tons of oil, of which 85 percent was synthetic oil using the Standard Oil hydrogenation process. Standard Oil of New Jersey. State where I live. I'm going to find one more piece and then I'll, I'll, I'll summarize this. Then we'll go to phone calls. This is in my book, The Patriot Report, Unmasking the Conspiracy of Money War. It took me two years to prepare. It's here. It's out. Go get it. Hotepjesus.com. Hotep, you're a genius. Hotepjesus.com. Let's see what else we got. Um, that's pretty damning, but. I'm looking for something really, really. Okay, here's a testimony during one of the hearings. Um, is it true that while the delay in divulging the BUNA, which is the synthetic rubber process, uh, the BUNA processes to American rubber companies was taking place, were in the meantime keeping IG well informed in regard to the synthetic rubber development in the U.S.? Yes. So that at all times, IG was fully aware of the state of development of the American synthetic rubber industry? Yes. This is during the war. Black Falcon said Hitler wouldn't have conquered Europe without the help of U.S. companies and banking. Wall Street financed Hitler. In 1934, testimony to the U.S. Congress of House of Representatives Special Committee Special Committee on Un-American Activities, Investigation of Nazi Propaganda Activities, and Investigation of Certain Other Propaganda Activities, Lee confirmed that IG Farben was affiliated with the American firm. He says, the American IG is a holding company with directors, such people as Edsel Ford, Walter Teagle, one of the officers of the Citibank. Citibank, still top three banks in the United States right now, if not the world. Let's, let's, uh, let's close this for now and let's summarize. It's, it's damning. I mean, we could do this all day. Like I said, I could do two hours just on this. But let's go back. go back. So here, Elon Musk lies to us. And he says, America helped rebuild Germany. The blatant lie. It's not even the omission. It's a lie. America built Germany. And after the war, went to go collect. Now, we just spoke about earlier, when you're a sophisticated warrior tribe, what do you want to do? You want to keep the nation intact. You want to keep industry intact. You don't want to destroy the whole thing. You want people getting back to work so you can keep getting your money. You need that. You need that. You need a You need Germany back up and running so you could get more loans, so you could give out more loans, so you can create more debt from credit. You want to issue credit. That's how you get paid. That's modern capitalism. Or I should say financial capitalism. 
financial capitalism, according to Carol Quickly, is when you start issuing credit, when you start mastering the concept of credit. So they didn't rebuild Germany. That's that's a, that's the, the the fucking Rockefeller public school education story to hide the real story. Wall Street built Germany. Wall Street wanted to make sure they was going to cash in on Germany. Because if Germany won the war, they wasn't going to be able to cash in. So that's why they coerced America to enter the war to end it, because that U-boat campaign was busting their ass. And it was a grueling war, and we lost millions of American lives in that war. Or hundreds of thousands. Millions total. Lives, period. Millions total, right? So, he says we help rebuild Germany. The truth of the matter is, The bankers don't want, well, let me tell you what they want. What they want is a balance of power. They want equality of poverty, equality of control. They don't want, okay, Germany is the superpower. Let's not say world power. Let's just say they'd become the superpower of Europe. When really the goal is destabilize Germany, destabilize Poland, destabilize Russia. Mostly Russia and Germany, because you know how that backstabbing story goes. Destabilize France. All of this happening within the same like 20 years. 20 year span. Bolshevik revolution. Assassination of France Ferdinand and all of that. But what they want is the bankers is destabilization of national power. So they allowed Hitler to get so much power, develop the technology that they that Wall Street gave him, that Standard Oil gave him, that SO gave him, that uh, IG Farming gave him, that um, ITT gave him, uh, 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 that Ford gave him, right? Henry Ford. Gave him all this technology. Allow him to build up. And as soon as he got too power, clip his, clip his power. He's too powerful now. Let's clip his power. This is what they do. They build people up. And when you get too powerful, they clip you. That's the story of Germany. Wall Street built Germany. Germany, uh, uh, Hitler got too big for his britches. Because remember... Hitler was Time Man of the Year. He was on Time Magazine, Time Man of the Year. Everybody loved him. All of a sudden, you don't love him? Why? Because he was not working towards the interests of Wall Street. Once he ceased to be useful to Wall Street, they clipped his ass. This is facts. So they go in, they clip him, and now Wall Street goes in and... um. Oh, there's a key part of this I'm missing. Oh, shit. Um, Oh, man, what's that called? The name of the the loan package. Thought about the loan package. No, it's not that. Let me see. Is that it? Sometimes I get these confused. There's so many fucking. No, it's not this one. This was the previous. Yeah, right. So I'm got that right. That's the previous one. The Dahl's plan is the one that fucked Germany over. But there was a there was some credits. Um that was um. Oh, where did I put that? Where do I put that? Um you know what? Hold on. Um I might find it. Faster. Uh, uh. Oh, no, wait, I didn't type that right. Hold on. Typo. 
All right. So this is the first one. The doll's playing. I was telling you about. This is in my book too. Uh, hold on. Let's uh, let's close my book because my book's too detailed. It's too detailed for this stream. Um, it'll take me forever to dissect it. Um, so this is the doll's plan. Temporarily resolve the issue of reparations, right? So, uh, Germany after World War One was supposed to pay reparations, right? But then you got some Dawes plan, and the Dawes plan is basically saying, "Hey, uh, we know you got paid reparations. How about I loan it to you, right?" And you see right here, Germany has loaned eight hundred million Reichsmark to be the base capital of the central bank, the central bank to ensure the Reichsmark stability. About half of the sum was what raised through Wall Street bond issues in the United States of America. So Germany loses the war. They got to pay up. They lose World War I. They got to pay up. And what happened? United States bails them out. Wall Street bond issues in, issued in the United States. This is basic common knowledge everybody needs to, needs to have. Now, that's one credit. I cannot remember the name of the credit. I'm not even going to spend no more time on this because this right here is enough to show you what the fuck was going on. So wait, so they loaned money to pay off their own. You see what I'm saying? This is the game they play. That I, I should have played. The, I should have played the disclaimer, right? I should have. Now, there was another loan that happened after. Wall Street loans. Germany, let's go post World War II. Let's see what Google gives us. Um, yeah, more war debt. Yeah, that was the Dawes plan. Is it the Young plan? No, the Young plan was before that. Um, it's not the Young plan. Yeah, not the Young plan. The Young plan came after too. Um. Hitler defaulted, but now Germany will have to pay. Uh, all right, right, look at New York Times. Between the two world wars, American investors lent Germany then $210 million as part of the first great international effort to bail out a bankrupt company, a bankrupt country. Elon would tell you we did it because we're a benevolent nation. That's what they'll tell you. He'll, he'll basically say, don't trust your common sense. We're the good guys. When really there is no us. It's the bankers versus everybody. It's Wall Street versus everybody. It's, it's the LIBOR versus everybody. That's right here. The American bondholders were the victims of decision made at the end of the two worlds. The money lent to Germany to allow to make reparations payments that was victorious, blah, 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 blah. But after World War II, the Allies were more concerned with not repeating the mistakes of World War I by saddling Germany with bills it could not pay, forcing Germany uh, to meet its financial obligation with low priority. Um, West Germany paid off the principal of the loans during the following few decades. Um... All right, so maybe I got my, my information confused. I'm, I'm a flawed human being. Um, maybe the doll's plan was what I was thinking about. But I could have sworn. I could have sworn there was, there was some loans after World War II. But, that, again, that might be. Um, That might be, you know, getting real deep in the weeds. And again, I haven't studied this since I wrote this book. When did I write this book? When did I write the Patriot Report? Patriot Report, A Massive Conspiracy of Money and War was written when? Um, 2021. 2021. It's three years ago. Go get a copy. Page report, Unmasked Conspiracy of Money War, Hotep, hotepjesus.com. Hotep, you're a genius, hotepjesus.com. Same banks who uh, funded Hitler rebuilt Germany. Exactly, exactly, exactly. 
pure cap. So that was in the bag. I'm guys. I'm glad you guys made me made me uh, go back in the bag so I can get that off my chest. I hate Elon. I can't stand him. He's such a fucking. You know what it is? My issue with Elon is the same issue people have with Jay Z. Is the same issue people have with LeBron James. It's not him. It's his fans. It's the people that be like. Oh, no, he's not the Antichrist. He's a good guy. He's one of us. And it's just like, yo, you really fucking dumb. You just easily fooled. When the peoples need a leader, they will give him one, says Adam Weishaupt, founder of the Illuminati. We got uh, Goldstein waiting, waiting in the wing. Let's go to the phone lines. I'll be right back after the short, brief commercial break. Welcome to the fourth annual Grifties and the first ever live Grifty Awards. And now for your host, Uncle Hotep and Hotep Jesus. Yo, no George, but I can't even breathe in this joint. <laughs> That's fucked up. He working on that Coon of the Year award. Black people, am I right? We've got some great categories tonight including athlete. We'll say what's up to your dad. Season's COVID-19. Who did y'all, who did you want? Hamlin? Hamlin's a sleeper. Hamlin's a sleeper. <laughs> Female, musical, celebrity, people's political grifty, the Hall of Fame, and a surprise category. Y'all see we professional, we got the teleprompter and shit. And of course, the one everyone is waiting for, Grifter of the Year Award. From podcasts to movies. DJ Protocol. Yeah, DJ, that's the time to do it. Uh, this is not a grift. I really think Little Nas X is a gay demon. How dare Unlike you? Unlike most modern award shows, none of these women have penises. Women shouldn't speak anyways. Y'all pick the blackest room for a black. Paint the walls white so I can see y'all next time. All coons look alike to me. And some of you white people, too. Some of y'all look like you came from 8 Mile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're halfway through, no one's been shot yet. But I'm going to say at the Grifty Awards, there's only one person more arrogant, more self-assured than me, and that's Hotep Jesus. Grifter of the year. Clap it off for old Uncle Hotep. Hopefully my kids will watch this and be inspired and stuff like that. Fuck them kids. <laughs> I'm looking for my wallet. I'm like, oh, thank God he didn't take it. Thank God. My apologies. Ghost ain't calling. Get Goldstein on the line here. See what he got for us today. Um. All right, hold on a second. While we wait for Goldstein, I'm gonna just check the trends and drudge. We'll take a look at that stuff. Good Friday. Happy Good Friday to my people. Can I say something offensive? This is to Christians. Christians, sometimes y'all motherfuckers are slow as shit. And there's any time you should realize what the fuck is going on with your holy book, it's this Sunday. It's this Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to ask you. Call from Murphy. Why, why does Easter fall on a Sunday every year? Why is it that Christ is reborn? Why is it that Christ is reincarnated at the same time? or around the same time as the spring equinox. Have you not figured out that your book is about the stars? It's about the celestial bodies. Have you not figured that out yet? Have you not figured out the allegory in your story and you still worship a man and don't understand it? Your book came from sun worship. Have you not figured that out yet? I know I'm hurting some of y'all feelings and you want to fucking believe in Jesus Christ and shit, but I'm not here to fucking tell people to believe in fucking uh, Santa Claus. Grown ass folks believing in Santa Claus. You got to stop that shit at some point. If you don't figure that out this fucking Sunday, that your holiday 
is on a Sunday. Monday. Do you know what Monday is in Spanish? Lunes. You know what lunes mean or lunar? It means the moon. The fucking days of the week are based around the celestial bodies. Why haven't you figured this out yet? Ghosting, I'm sorry. <laughs> what up? They got me in a mood today. Hey, I feel you. Am I lying though? No, nah, you ain't. Okay. okay. You ain't. So I just got one thing to say today. Real mm-hmm. quick. Real motherfucking uh, brief call in today. But I want to make it clear. Okay. Stop with the bullshit. Keep strumming the motherfucking division strings. I'm going to start looking at you like an insurgent. Mm. This is a movement at the end of the day. And I'm very hypersensitive to that type of shit if you don't know me by now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, day nope. two of drama, day two of drama. That's two days too many. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm fucking start looking at you like, wait a minute, what is you trying to do? Who do you, who's paying your checks? Ah, uh, who you sent you? Saying? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Now I know that's probably thinking. not going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because damn, you know what I mean? Just out of nowhere, just all of a sudden, my fucking just. I don't know. All I know is this. We watching. We watching. <laughs> and you see everything. I see everything. I don't miss a goddamn thing. Half the shit I see ain't even there. So that should scare you. <laughs> <laughs> Big facts. All right, man. Hotel and Bill. That's it. All right, Hotel and Bill. Hey, man, head of immigration. Insurgent Watch has spoken. And when he say you gone, you gone. I'm not even going to try and fight for you. If Goldstein says somebody got to be gone, you will be excommunicated. I will defer to his judgment ASAP. Will not be welcome. Uh, um... All right, let's see the trends. Good Friday. Make sure you eat your fish or whatever the fuck it is that you do. I was raised Catholic, and I still don't remember what the fuck we were supposed to do. And, you know, I'm not here to disrespect anybody's religion, but it's very frustrating when you guys don't acknowledge the fucking truth in your fucking book. And it, it, you're, you're really limiting yourself because there's power in your holy book. There's power in your holy book if you know how to decipher this shit. But if you, you don't know how to decipher this shit, what good is it? They gave you, they, they gave you a child story to keep you from becoming an adult. Hotep, you're a genius. Hotepjesus.com. They gave you a child story to keep you from growing into an adult. You don't even see the power in your own book. You don't see the mysticism in your own book. You don't see power in your book. All your powers relinquished outside of yourself, and that's on purpose. They control your religion. They control your religion to control you. Got to stop that shit. Got to stop that shit, you know. Um, really weird. And it's, it's, it's to a hotep. It's very like juvenile, right? Like, cause our studies are so deep and they're so old, they're ancient. And we learn them at so young an age. Like when we're like, you know, we're teenagers coming into this information and we see adults running around with the Santa Claus story. And we're like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? You ain't figured this shit out yet. You're a grown ass man. How have you not figured this shit out yet? It's very frustrating for us, especially when you challenge us. I'm like, yo, you're the one reading the fucking story wrong, and you're mad. You're looking at me like I'm the quack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's see what's on a drudge before I offend more people. Um. 
But again, I'm the guy that's not afraid of offending people. I'm I'm a guy that is loyal. To, I am loyal to the truth. What is going on? Polish prime minister warns we are in a pre-war era as Putin missiles fire close to border. Okay. All right. The drudge, the drudge got worse, man. The drudge used to be okay. Now this shit is just mad left wing. All hands on deck, Biden, Clinton, Obama, rally party. I saw that shit. And remember I told you, oh, somebody asked me the other day, yo. Um, oh, no. So we were talking about um, uh, you know, how they made Obama come out. They saw him in England walking in, you know, some building. And, you know, they pulled him out the other day and. I said, they're going to pull everybody out. And they went and got, they dug Bill Clinton up. They're going to pull everybody out to help Biden. It's all hands on deck. You see it right there. It's all hands on deck. So people are like, oh, they got Obama. They're they going to get everybody, bro. <laughs> it's not just Obama. They're going to get everybody. Mm, three, you, three presidents unite to blast Trump. It take three of them. Mets owner takes large state, stake in Fox. Stock market surges to start 22 record highs in three months. Yeah, stock market been raging. Portfolio is up. If you're not in our investment group, make sure you join our investment group. Telegram link is in the description box below. NYC AI chatbot tells businesses to break law. Oh, boy. Facebook let Netflix see users' uh, uh, DMs. Lawsuit. Yeah, they could definitely see your DMs. What else they got here? What? The ancient volatile Christian ideas behind Trump's obsession with blood. Oh my God. And see, that's the thing with me. Like I come with balance where I'm like, Christianity is important. It's very important. It is very important. I just have a problem with the interpretation. That's all I have a problem with and how you use your good book. And if you use your good book properly, you wouldn't be getting your ass kicked like this. Islam, you see how they use their book. They strictly adhere to it. The Jews strict to, stick to their book, strictly adhere to it. Only some of them. Christians, uh, not so much. Can't even interpret it. You don't even know what your book's about. You can't even power, you can't even harness the power of the sun. For yourself. That's another story for another day. I don't feel like getting deep into that shit. Um, all right. Who is this? I don't know who this is. Who is it? Somebody said they want to call in. Go ahead, bro. Don has big problem with Republican voters. What problem could he have with GOP? Oh, that's, that's fake news. It's just fake news. They're saying, oh, he's got 16% that said no. Well, if fucking the, the rest of 80, 84% say yes, what the fuck are you talking about? He ain't got no problem. Could house control flip the Dems? Probably. I could see the house going Dem if it's not already. I think it is Dem, isn't it? They got Diddy up here. Beyonce. I was going to listen to her album today, but I just didn't. How will Nashville react to country Beyonce? Who cares? Fuck Nashville. Drop your album and keep it moving. 
liberals always want to point to people that got an issue. Ignore them motherfuckers. They don't control music. From hoedown to full-blown genre throwdown. Oh, my God. If Nashville is mad because niggas is making uh, uh, country music, let them stay mad. Let them stay mad. Who cares? Yeah, strong dad. Tesla's terrible quarter catches analysis asleep at the wheel. Yeah, Tesla's stock has been so terrible. Elon need to focus on Tesla. I, I think a lot of it is just because of the shit he's doing on Twitter. But I could be wrong. I probably am wrong, actually. Could be a whole host of reasons why Tesla's stock is tumbling. Um, Chinese smartphone maker. I remember I sat in a Tesla once. Call from. Strong Dad. Strong Dad, what's up, yo? What up, what up? What up, what up, what's going on, yo? Man? Good stream, good stream. Thank you, sir. Um, I wanted to talk about the book, about the uh, the holy book. The holy book? Go ahead, let's do it. And uh, the Bible here. So, I, I started noticing some things recently. Uh, me at, me and my wife, we decided that we would do every Sunday, every Sunday morning while the baby's still asleep, you know, we sit down and we read from the Bible and we, you know, we use select passages so that that pertain to, you know, love and marriage and all this. And I've read the Bible before, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm black, black. I went to Lennon Hall Baptist Church, you know what I'm saying? Every Sunday with grandma, all that. So I've read the Bible before, but as an adult, you know, as an adult husband, father, and man, I, I had never read it, uh, you know, with the means to grow. And recently, you know, as we're reading it, what I'm noticing, I notice a lot is that all of the concepts within it are wrapped around love. Uh, what, what I'm starting to understand is everything itself hinges on love. The, you know, the negative emotion and the positive emotion that we feel. And what I notice when I see people in the Christian world or who claim to be Christian or, you know, whatever denomination, you know, relating to is that that is the one integral aspect they never employ when they are, uh, you know, uh, analyzing other people who go against their values and beliefs or, you know, communicating with people who potentially don't align with them. And I feel like that's, you know, one of the main things that you know, that they've fallen off of is that is, is remembering that, that aspect. And I just want to know your opinion on that. Yeah. Christians suck with love. They, they suck at it. Um, cause if they, if they expressed, well, let's say, let me not say that. I take that back. I take that back. The Christian grifters suck at perpetuating love and Christians suck at keeping them under control. Yeah. Because the Christian grifters shouldn't have an audience if they're not acting out of love. They should be exactly. banished from the community. They should be, I'm not going to talk about what they used to do in Europe, but you know how Europe dealt with these people. <laughs> yeah. You know how early America, tar and feather and all that Very stuff. Very barbaric. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right? So we're in times now where just because you said a bunch of things I like, I'm going to forgive when you don't act out of love, even though the majority of the time you're not acting out of love. So for me, it's always been like same thing with Elon. It's not about Elon. It's the fact that his followers are fucking idiots. The Christians allow these fucking idiots to run them and represent yeah. them white Christian nationalists. This would never be possible if they held their grifter class in check. If they didn't carry um, hypocrisies with them, right? Oh, why do we have identity politics to why can't I be pro-white? Which one is it? Do you want to be pro-white yeah. or do you don't like identity politics? Is racism real or is it not? Is racism real or is it not? You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's just about hypocrisy and, and not controlling the grifter class. And also, also, sidebar, I'm, I'm really upset that you're going to 
going to go ahead and make me appreciate some music that Bryce dropped. Oh, you like that record? <laughs> I mean, it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good, you know what I'm saying? I'm, so. I'm, I'm a sucker. I'm a, I'm a sucker for some analytical, you know what I'm saying, hip-hop like that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a... Like concept. a detailed storytelling. Yeah, I, I, I like that. It's a good concept. It, it was good. It was good. I, I, I can admit that. I can admit that. You know. Yeah, I was trying. Not gonna I bump it in the gym. gym. <laughs> I was in the gym listening to it, and I was trying to follow the, the the game. And at a certain point, it just became too hard to follow in my head. And then, so today when I did that. I was like, okay, this is why I couldn't follow it in my head. I can't even follow it when I'm looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. Because some of the, the moves he was saying it was a bit cryptic, right? You had to like infer, yeah. okay, oh, that's this is the move that he's happening. He's he's, he's not. And even, and he didn't he didn't finish the game. He didn't finish the game. He didn't finish the game, which means we need a oh, part obviously, two. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's going to be another one. See, I that that was that was the hook line for me. Was not not ending on checkmate. I was I was I was I was impressed by that. I thought we was gonna get a checkmate tonight. I, I, I was, I was, a, I'm one of those people. You know what I'm saying? I'll take the cliffhanger. Yeah, definitely cliffhanger. Great uh, position for Black too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Respect, respect to, uh, to that. Um, I will, I will, I will offer that up. Nothing else though. That's a first. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else though. <laughs> His album solid. Okay, well, His album's it. really solid. I, I like. This might be, maybe. I don't want to say it's his best album, but it might be his best album. It's really fucking solid. Maybe, maybe I'll listen. It's tight. Maybe I'll it's listen. airtight because it's so, it's so uh, niche with the whole, you know, biblical rap. Like, he's, like he says on the album, this ain't Christian rap. This is Bible rap. You know, so it's so niche that it, it has its own feel to it. And, 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 the, and yeah. it's, it's a really good, it's a really good album. I really enjoyed it. All right, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be fair and check it out. All right, and, that's what's uh, up. Trash it. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I got. That's all I got. All right, appreciate you, man. Have a good weekend, bro. Oh yeah, y'all too. Hold up a bill. Hold up a bill. Let's see here. Got Ohio Tap waiting. Damn, Thomas Sowell. How old is Thomas Sowell? Jesus Christmas. This nigga was born during slavery. 93 years old. And he's still publishing books? Twenty twenty. Last year he published Social Justice Fallacies. Wow. Insane. Insane. I want to read some of his Marxist work just to see where his brain was. I started a while back and it just didn't interest me. So maybe, you know, when I get back into studying Marxism, I'll probably read that. Um, what is this? Oh. The old, old, old clip. Um, Tari calling. We waiting on Tari to call in. Drudge ain't got shit on it, man. Yeah. Um, wait, hold on. We got some upset people on Rumble. Now, Rumble is definitely way more red, white, and less familiar with me. So let's, let's, look, at the, let's look at the complaints in Rumble. What are they saying here? Call from... Sorry. Sorry, what up, yo? What up, what up? What's good with yeah. you? You know, uh, it's, it's funny you, uh, you said what you said about uh, Easter today. I was, I was actually having to be thinking about that. Um, there was a pretty, uh, one of the red whites I watched, he, he wrote a children's book this year. Okay. And, um, you know, I think I told you about the other one he wrote was, uh, what was the last one was about uh, Thanksgiving or something. So this one he wrote about Easter and it was, it, it was pretty funny because, 
the way he wrote about it, like it's supposed to be like, you know, it's like American history thing, the way he wrote about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very red, white. That's, that's all I was, that's all I'll say. Yeah, very red, white, red, white. yeah, it was very red, white. <laughs> Just that's, the way un- he, that's unfortunate. I know. Yeah. I was like, he could have done so much better because he named it Why Easter. And I was like, oh, that with that kind of title, he could have really got into some stuff, you know, some real biblical stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he, he's all about a biblical worldview, but, you know, some people's biblical worldview is a little different than others. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Everybody's on their own journey. I guess we got to be patient and shit. Yeah. You, and, you know, um, I, I finally did a little bit of thinking about that bridge. What bridge? Oh, the Baltimore uh, Bridge? Yeah. What you got? I was, I was doing a little bit more thinking about the bridge. The first thing I thought about was, uh, like, what is what does the bridge connect? Because I don't live in Baltimore um, or Maryland. But, uh, I, like, what is what does that bridge connect? Like, what two areas is that, does that bridge connect? I don't know. Um, it's, 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 uh, according to, uh, Cannon, he said it's basically like intra, intrastate. So it doesn't go to other states. It just, it sort of makes a circle and help people get around the state easier. Yeah. That was, that's what made me think about it. Apparently everybody's talking about the port. I say uh, this is a, this is a big important thing. I guess it's going on. Um, that apparently this could affect, you know, access. Because it's um, so important to, I guess, interstate travel, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, I, I guess I'm a little, I might be leaning towards, especially when I look at the video a little bit closer. Now, I might be leaning towards a little bit of, um, a little bit of foul play, so to speak. Oh yeah. So, keep you, keep you a little updated. I'm gonna do a little bit more research myself. But, All right, let me know you what know, you're doing. Look a little fishy to me, just a little bit. All right. But, you know, well, I don't know busy. too much about bridges. It just, it seemed like, you know, I'm not like, you know, like a 9-11 conspiracy type person, like in terms of like, you know, uh, the buildings didn't look like the, you know, it was a, looked like it was a detonation or anything, but it just seemed like it fell a little too fast. It might just be me. Is it, is it just me? Fast and perfect. Yeah. It you- seemed a little too, too perfect. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it seemed like you know accidents are a lot more sloppy. Yeah, I guess that's that's how I, that's how I look at it. You know, it seemed it seemed a little bit more like that. It was a uniform. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I you know I try I try to be um try to be uh I try to be reasonable about it. You know, I don't, I don't like to jump out the window too much. Yeah. Um, and I know um I know they was having some some, some drama on uh on Twitter the other day. I heard. I heard about the um, the tits for tat and and whatnot, mm-hmm. but uh, all I all I'm gonna say is you know just just remember everybody, hold up and build, you know, just hold up and build. Yeah, it is. Like, Appreciate it, Tari. Hold up and build. Ciao, oh, Tari. Ronan wanna call it. Yeah, Ronan. Friday. I don't got no job. And I ain't got shit to do. Hmm. There's a time. I want to share the timeline with you, but the way Twitter's set up, never you never know what's gonna pop up on the screen. Leo uh, Lee Stranahan, he's completely obsessed with Israel. He says, Has your opinion of Israel changed in the past few months? His options are no change. I love Israel more and hate Israel more. I put I love Israel more. I have never loved Israel as much as I have now. And that's the bottom line. Um, no gripes with Israel. None at all. Mostly because I understand how the world works. Um, some people don't. And also because people try to separate it. People try to separate Israel from America. They try to separate Jews from whites. They try to separate Jews from Europeans. Hey, man, y'all got to take your good apples and your bad apples. 
You gotta take all of it, man. You gotta take credit for all that shit. If we gotta take credit for um, Pookie the crackhead, you gotta deal with your shit too. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to separate that out. Nah, nigga. Clean your house up. Clean your house up. Do better. Educate your people. ZV Bear, how many retweets do you need, bro? Jesus Christ. Oh, my fucking God. Here we go with the woke, woke right shit. Wow. Look at this guy. This guy's such a fucking grifter. <sighs> woke right. Everything's racist. Wow, the Biden-Obama-Clinton fundraiser was racist. So I guess he's being sarcastic because it says valid ID was required for the Biden-Obama-Clinton. Nobody talks about the left more than the fucking woke right. Call from... I wouldn't even have known this fucking dinner happened if it wasn't for the woke right. Ronan, what's up, bro? Not too much. Uh, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. Uh, I just had a couple things I just wanted to touch on, and then I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of what's been going on with the, the recent um, bridge collapse and, and the, the boat sinking, I just want everyone to expect more logistical nightmares like that to happen. Um, because, you know, whether or not this was a, you know, mistake or intentional, whatever, you know, regardless of that, at this point, it, you know, when things like this happen on a consistent basis, you know, there's no point of it being a coincidence. You know, uh, right now uh, you have Peter McCullen and he's having his committee hearings regarding the, the vacations and they're essentially kind of all, you know, unifying under the same agreement that the uh, FDA and the WHO are covering up a massive scandal. Uh, you have the fact that Nigeria has pretty much just kicked out uh, U.S. military. Uh, so, and then on top of that, you have what's kind of going on here with everyone kind of waking up to many of the false realities, whether it's Gaza, whether it's, you know, Biden administration, whatever it may be. Um, so I expect people to just kind of prepare yourselves because more of these, you know, incidents are going to continue to happen because, it's getting too hard for the powers to be to control and manipulate and obfuscate any type of information. So, you know, when you look at what happened with uh, East Palestine and the, uh, the train derailment, we had a lot of serious stuff going on right around that time. Uh, so just expect more of these things to happen as the summer progresses, as we get closer to the elections. Well, the and United States infrastructure is shit. Let's just call it spade a spade. Yeah. And, um, so I have a cousin who's absolutely brilliant. Um, she graduated top of her class and all of that. Moved here from Jamaica. And uh, she's a civil engineer. And uh, pretty high up. And uh, I asked her about the infrastructure. She basically told me, um, I can't tell you because if I do, you'll be terrified. You'll never cross a bridge again. So I didn't ask her to elaborate. That's all. I think that response was a great response and let me know. Okay. Shit is shit. So the, the country definitely needs um, some rebuilding and a check on it. Okay. So you're correct. And when you say, especially in this dragon year, that we should expect more incidences of infrastructure failing. I, I would agree. Maybe not as bad, but we should expect it. And it's been happening. We see the, the sinkholes and all of that stuff in Florida because they built the place on swampland and all of that, yeah. And to, you know, add on to what your cousin was saying, you know, think about how many of these infrastructural situations that the government is aware of, but they're not doing anything about it because eventually they might need that situation to happen in order to distract from anything else. So, you know, I think that a lot of these infrastructure issues are well aware of, and they wait for certain timings, events, whether it's through occult practices, you know, numerology, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I heard the quartering was like, oh, well, the boat got knocked over by the wind, and it's like, we don't have fucking airbenders moving boats. That's not how it works. <laughs> uh, so you have people who are going to start saying these really – ignorant kind of things and we know that they're either paid to say these ignorant things to distract us from how you know what's really going on like 
how many people are well aware that every single road in the United States is pretty much a pothole <laughs> and we don't fix anything. We just put band-aids over it. Yeah. Uh, so I just think in terms of stuff like that, I think well, people should just the be quarter aware. Ring, the quarter is a content creator, right? He's not a thinker. Yeah. He's a content creator, right? So yeah. he's going to say whatever comes to his mind and whatever sounds the most newsworthy, right? And that's why his stuff mm-hmm. does very well because he takes these hard leaning stances one way, right? And yep. um he doesn't care if they're accurate or not. No, you're you're absolutely right and that's why I think when you now have the whole DEI situation with the mayor, that's going to be the new the new ML for for now. Yeah. Anytime there's some kind of infrastructure disaster, They'll make sure that it's in a black city with like a black, you know, or government officials, anything like that to keep that divide going on. So yeah. just just prepare for more of that stupid disaster kind of stuff happening, especially when the summer comes around. Mm. Yeah. And my my question to you is, um, and I, I guess I'll, I'll go with my my big brain my big brain question for you today is, in regarding to in regards to CBDC and and debt. Um, you know, my, my mom is a, as is a big proponent of get a credit card, you need a credit card, you need a credit card. Um, and you know, I'm always telling her like, yeah, they sound good on paper, but then what about the repercussions that come with it? And I've noticed that, you know, a lot of people are putting their mortgages, their rent, car payments on their credit cards. And, you know, they're racking up this, you know, crazy debt. And I've just been wondering, is it possible that when they eventually roll out the CBDC, people who have, you know, substantial amount of credit card debt, you know, are they going to be more, will they be the first ones to be implemented into the CBDC system because of the amount of debt that they carry? No, no, no. Yeah, I think you jumped way too far right there. You went galaxy take right there. The first people are going to be government assistants. Uh, okay. in any type of government payments, uh, especially federal government payments, those are to be the first adopters of the CBDC. Um, okay. The second are going to be merchants. They're going to um, uh, basically you got to you know swap currencies, right? So the best way to swap currencies is through a, a merchant, right? Because that's where all the commerce is happening. So they incentivize yeah. merchants and, and, and the POS, the point okay. of sale and all of that. Um, with regard to Credit, the the credit game is um, they actually don't want you to pay off your debt. Okay. Your debt is an asset on their books, and then they they leverage your debt to uh, create more debt or to collect credit. Okay. So. Yeah, it's, we're not going to deal with a situation where you know this, you know they're, they're going to implement CBDC for people with high credit card debt. No, they want high credit card debt. Um, they'll probably create new programs to manage your debt, but if you have debt that's beyond your, um, you know, beyond your management, they'll create you know refinancing opportunities and or just open up another credit card and pay that credit card with that credit card, right? You have some people that do yeah. shit like this, right? Yeah. And they revolve the debt, <laughs> um, okay. which is a game some people play, right? You put everything on this card, and the next month you pay off that card with this card, and then, you know, this is the, the, the games that people play. Um, um, I'm not exactly sure how that works or if what I said is accurate or not. I just, this is just rumors what I hear. But uh, I'm somebody who has several credit cards, uh, I got a 750 plus credit score. Uh, I played a credit game. Um, if you live in the Western civilization world, uh, you got to play the credit game. Everything revolves around your credit score. You know, when you want to go get um, a rental uh, property, when you want to buy a car, when you want to buy a house. So your credit is very important. So I would suggest people um, keep uh, less than 30% on their credit card okay. and then paid off okay. at the end of the month. Um, but okay. you always want to keep about 30% debt on your credit card or no more, anything more than that kind of dings your credit. Okay. Yeah. No, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Cause there was something that was kind of bugging me and I really wanted to 
uh, push, you know, press your buns about it. So I, I feel a lot more better about it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, nah, credit card holders, they ain't got to worry about it. At least okay. not from, from what I'm thinking about. But I'm, I'll think about it more and see how there might be a correlation there, but I just don't see any. Okay. Awesome. Oh, I really appreciate this. Thank you so much, Hotel. All right, no doubt, yo. Hotel and Bill. Hotel and Bill. Uh, Tari said, Babylonian money magic. Yeah. 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 Money magic. R.I.P. Lou Gossett Jr. Damn. Lost another one. It's been a crazy week, man. R.I.P. Lou Gossett Jr. Another one bites the dust. Gone, but not forgotten. Um, 4.30. I had somebody that said they were on a train. <clears throat> I was going to call in. I'll give them another two minutes here. If not, I'll close the, uh, I'll close the phone line. Now, Bryson tagged Gotham Chess. Did Gotham Chess? Gotham's not going to. Gotham's too afraid to get canceled to share Bryson's video. I know Gotham. He's a punk. Sorry, Gotham. I love your channel. You're cool, but you're you're scared of your audience. I've seen you. So Gotham is. Uh, this is Gotham. This is Gotham Chess. His name is uh, Levy Rosman, and he's a Russian Jew, right? And um, when the Russian Ukraine conflict kicked off, he found out that a lot of his audience, he's got some of his audience, are red whites. And when he gave his opinion, they lit his ass up. And they lit his ass up with anti-Semitic comments. They lit his ass up. I remember that stream. Oh, let me see if I can find it. That stream was hilarious. <laughs> um, if it's still up. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. So Gotham Chess does um, chess commentary. He's one of the biggest chess YouTubers. Um, Call from Steph Colonel. Steph, yo, what up, man? Yo, what up, what up? How's it going? What's up, yo? Hey, um, I wanted to add to the um to I think Tari was talking about the uh bridge earlier. Did you remember you remember in twenty sixteen about you remember twenty sixteen with the Ah, uh, y'all made me hang up on Steph. Steph, call back. I'm sorry. Hey, hold on. Whoever that is calling in, hold on a second. Steph, go ahead. Call back in. I'm sorry. Some bullshit. The video? No. It's yeah, I don't think he's got it up. Or I just can't find it. But they lit his ass up. And I'll be like, you know, when these chess commentators try to talk politics, I'll be like, yo, just stick to chess, yo. Don't don't come over here trying to talk some shit you don't know. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. Just shut the fuck up. Um, Hikaru's smart enough to do that. Hikaru doesn't. Yo. Call from Steph Colonel. Steph. Yo. Yo, yo, my bad. What was you saying? All right, no, it's all good. Now I say, remember in 2016 where they, where they, in a Hoboken terminal they had a train crash there? Ah. Oh yeah, this is a, this is like a, this is 2016, okay. right in um wee hours in the morning. Um, train is pulling in the Hoboken terminal, but the train is moving faster than what it should. Mm -hmm. Well, it ends up going over the um bumping block and it and jumped they the ended up hitting they yeah they jumped the rail and they ended up uh doing a lot of like structural damage around the um station and whatnot and i think they, i think it it didn't go through like the ticket office or anything like that but it it came very close to like hitting the ticket office and things like that it was it was, was kind of crazy at the top one person uh was killed unfortunately but there was like massive injuries and whatever yeah um now, the official story is that the engineer 
was uh or he was fatigued or fell asleep but so they ended up right not actually understaffed but what happened was they ended up blaming it on um Hung died in no sleep apnea. Okay. Right? So they blamed it on Hung died in no sleep apnea at the time. The person turned around, sued the company, actually won, and got to keep his job after all, after all, all that, what, whatever happened, whatever. Okay. What I'm pretty much saying is that with situations like that, you're never going to find out the truth, man. Yeah. The, the, like, this is, a, this is a situation where the truth... Let me tell you, whoever the the captains and whoever else is responsible for that, they are going to be on pins and needles, lawyered up for the next two, three years, possibly, while right. they're investigating this whole situation. So the the truth, honestly, is never coming out regarding this um <laughs> situation. You're right. And um, so I mean, I think, like I said, it's, it's definitely unfortunate. I don't know if I would suspect any foul play to per se, but as far as whatever's been happening, everything is just, everything is up in the air at this point. And also, too, look out for how they're going to come back after this, too, because you always know the saying, never let a good crisis go to waste. Right. What are they going to, what are they going to do to rebuild after that? Or what's going to be, what's going to be uh, rebuilt besides that bridge after that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, also, too, you know, I think this might, this might just be a me thing, bro, but like, I'm 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 getting so tired of people now. All of a sudden, I guess everybody has a green light to go after Democrats and whatnot. And now everyone wants to go in a Breakfast Club, and, or everybody's criticizing them now and stuff like that. I'm like, bro, we we told you all this shit was gonna happen four or five years ago. Like all this stuff that's happening right now, I just want to go on the whole the Tory archives and just go digging that shit and just be like, yo, we told you. Yeah. We told you, man. Yeah. So I, I, the hotel's been I, told you. Yeah, I don't. I just. I just find it so hard to just respect when these, when people like, when people like Eric Adams are getting grilled on these platforms now, and it's just like, bro, you, you, you now it's comfortable for you to do it because everybody, the, the money done dried up, the grip <laughs> done dried up, you know what I'm saying? So now, now all of a sudden, it. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all want to come and attack people. It's like, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, man, hotel and build, bro. Hotel and build. All right. Ciao, Steph. It's called. I didn't do that. Ooh, get your shit together. Your, your call has been forwarded to an automatic. Who is this? Hold on. All right. Uh, four two three calling. Calling, calling, calling. Calling, calling, calling. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's chop it up. Where you at? Four, two, three. You sleep? Taking a shit? Actually, things were a little messed up, but at least the Federal Reserve was no more shit. Uh. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, excuse me. Oh. I really got to do something about my diet. My diet is not. It's a bulking diet, but I want a healthy diet. You know, I looked in the mirror this morning, and I really liked what I saw. I really, like my, my waistline, not to sound too much of a woman, waistline was, it was waistline. Um, Cassius Can got a new workout. Make sure y'all go check this out. This is a good-ass back workout. I've been needing a good back workout. Pause. You got a back workout. Um, com. go check that out. Oh, let me see. It's the uh back workout he got for you. Call it Bulletproof Back. Get that swole turtle shell. 
the warm up he working through right here. A little stretching and get your chin ups on. Mm hmm. What else he got in there? Rack pulls. You can get your rack pull on. Call from. Yo. Yo. Hello? Jesus, who is this? Who is this testing my patience? You said text, call, I call you, you can't pick up the phone. Adding it, man. Call from Marshall. Oh, hold tap little nigga. What's up? What's up? What up, yo? All right, so I wanted to touch base on a couple of things, a couple of things that got my attention. Before we take things spiritual, let's focus on the physical, right? Okay. So okay. um I know for um a candidate day weekend, uh, I had two of those. Um whenever you are accepted or recruit or you apply to any of the military academies, um once you start completing that process, they then invite you down to the actual academy, and then you stay there for about a week, week and a half, two weeks, depending on which weekend you go and how much do they like you. Um, I had two weekends of uh, my junior and senior year of uh, high school, and um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is I was able to sit down in their um, ship repulsion class, and they were talking about ships of massive size can only turn with an extra amount of propulsion, right? And it's very interesting because uh, when you watch the video of the bridge, uh, the news says that the ship lost power, but it would have needed an ample amount of power to turn the way that it did. Um, no, they dropped anchor. If you drop the anchor, that's what forced it to turn like that. Okay. So here's, here's my rule, right? Uh -huh. Here's my rule on speculations and shit, right? Like, uh -huh. if you ain't like a boat expert, don't speculate. Just shut the fuck up. And this is not an offense to you. I'm just saying in general. This is not to you. I'm just saying in general, right? Like, if you don't know... If you don't know all right, for example, what does starboard mean? I don't know. Exactly. Like, if you don't know the basic language of boating, like, just leave the subject alone or, like, thoroughly research it and then come back with your, you know, your synopsis. But don't go off of, you know, I once heard and learned in this class, and it's like, well, did you know that the boat could turn because somebody dropped the anchor? Yeah, no, it, it can do that. I didn't oh. know it You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to be careful, yeah. young, and be careful. Yeah, I didn't know it dropped the anchor. Um, the only reason why I said that was because there's a um, one of my neighbors went to the Naval Academy. And he's like a Naval officer. He was talking about that. And that's what he was saying this morning. Yeah. But, um, no, nah, that's not really, like, the reason why I came here. The reason why I came here, more or less, is, like, I'm glad that you touched in on the fact that, like, the shit is based off of um, astrological signs and zodiac signs as much as religious people um, like to say those things about, um, what do you call it, about uh, astrology or people that are into zodiac signs and whatnot. But their whole shit is based upon that. It's the whole reason why, like, Moses told them to stop worshiping the bull. They were never worshiping a bull. They were looking to the skies because it was in the age of Taurus. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, to take things a step further, I, I first came into the realization that, um, what do you call it, that something was amiss. Like, I came into the realization that, like, it was an adult fairy tale. Um, I want to say in elementary school, I looked around, and I was seeing, like, no offense, but, like, you know all the big women that be in the church and whatnot? Yeah, and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, I know. That's, that was my first. Yeah, keep going. I know exactly where you're going with this because I had the same thing happen to me. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, damn, ever worked out a day in their life, but they over here giving all of this energy to God and all this other stuff. And I'm like, it's a lot of energy to make this big lady sweat like this. And so then I was thinking about, like, yo, this energy got to be going somewhere. And then I was thinking about, Whatever has tricked humans into playing outside of their self is over here 
channeling that energy and using it towards other things. And then I started like doing research on like uh, the energy behind symbols. And I came across energy egregores and things like that, which is like the whole reason why different religions have different symbolism. So like the mystics of those religions can use that energy and tap into it and use it for their own doing. Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, that's that's pretty much all I had to say. I'm just glad that you touched on that. And then I was also gonna say, um, I first came into the realization that um that the book wasn't literal. I wanna say uh when I told you about that girl from Abu Dhabi that turned out to be a princess Mariam, right? Mm-hmm. So I remember she was like, she kept telling me these things about Islam and Christianity, but I was like, so why does your dad make you like read the Quran with him every night if what you're saying is true? And she was like, uh, well, technically it's a book of spells. If you use it right, you can also protect yourself and different things like that. And I was like, huh? She was like, when you start gaining understanding, the words change. And I was like, huh? Yo, wait, I got a book. Oh, fuck. I forgot I had this shit, man. There's a book in one of my libraries that I may or may not share today. And a lot of it is hinged on if I can find it. Well, um, like, could you like, text me the book? Like, I want to read it. <laughs> yeah, if I find it, I'll definitely shoot it to you. Hold on. Let me see here. Um... But basically what this book is, it's, um, it's a book of spells, right? And for every spell is a verse in the Bible. And they tell you when you want to chant this spell, here's the Bible verse you got to chant to activate this spell. Okay. Um, no, not that. Um, hold on, let me see if I can find it here. No, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, speaking of which, by the way, on my way home, I swear to God, I I saw a blue Ferrari and the license plate said "Call me," so I took a photo. So just 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 for further proof, it was oh, a random, right. like yeah, just a random thing. I was walking back from the train station and like there was a Ferrari outside. What is that? Word. Um. Is this it? Oh, I think I found it. Hold on. I'm going to tell you if this is it or not. <clears throat> I think this is it. Hold on. I got to check the table of content if it has one. All right. It doesn't have a table of content. Hold on. Let me skim through this here and see. No, 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 this definitely is not. No, this definitely is not it. No, this is not it. Damn, what did I, where is that? Is that on my laptop? Yeah, you just reminded me about a book I ain't opened in years, bro. I don't know if I got a physical version of this. I don't know if I got a digital version. What color is the cover? I can't remember. I, you just made me realize I had this book and I hadn't, I hadn't opened this. Like I'm telling you, like it has to be at least 20 years, at least 20 years since I even, you know, opened this book and you just reminded me that it existed. Um, yeah, it's not here. It's not here. I gotta, I gotta dig and find out what that book was. And when I, when I find it, I'll share it with you. But, um, it basically says, you know, like, if you're sick, use this. If you want good luck, use this verse. If you want money, you know, use this verse. And it literally pulled out verses in the Bible. Let me see if chat has forbidden magic spells in the Bible. Is that it? I couldn't, like, even if you said the title, I don't think I'd be able to um, recognize it. I would recognize the inside of the book. Oh, but, um, 
you know who the author is? No. No. Uh, Hold on. Let me see if I can. Is this it? The ancient spells, charms, and enchantments using verses from the Old and New Testament. This might be it. Jessica C. Springfield? That sounds familiar. I think this is it. Who said this? Matt Earth Theory? What is it called? Book of Psalms. Yes. Yes. Um, see, that's also true. The Book of Psalms is also true because it was, it was definitely like magic using the Book of Psalms. Yes, Strong Dad. Oh, my God. Hold on. Um, was um, the hoodoo of Psalms? Is that it? No. Magical Secrets of the Psalms? Is this it? Ah, I think this is it. I think this is it. I think this is it, Strong Dad. Yeah, you're right, Strong Dad. It is the Psalms. Oh, no. No. Well, it's the Psalms, but the book I chose is the wrong one, and now I recognize covers. Now I recognize covers, and this isn't in my library. This is in my dad's library. Um, hold on. It's called The Secret of the Psalms. That's what it's called. Secrets of the Psalms. I believe this is it. And I'll show you guys on the screen in just a second if I can pull it up here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this is it. Godfrey Selig, yeah. But I think I've seen that other one before. The other first one I mentioned, I think I've seen that one as well. But yeah, this is it right here. Secret of the Psalms by Godfrey Selig. This is it right here. Um including 150 Psalms of the Holy Bible, a fragment of the uh, practical Kabbalah and the purposes of the Psalms to be reconciled with an enemy, receiving holy blessings for luck, court cases to escape danger and more. Use the Psalms within his book for personal help. This book provides instruction for using Psalms for such things. Strong dad know his shit. Strong dad know his shit. Secret of the Psalms. That's the one. Um, my dad has a copy of this. We've had this for a very long time. Um, okay. The uh, this cover, this red cover, is the one he has. I'm trying to find it. Um, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I think this. Yes, this is the one. This is the one right here. All right, found it. Thank you, Strong Dad. All right, this is the one right here. This is the one right here. This is the one right here. So it's in my dad's library. So it says right here, um, Psalm to heal diseases of the eyes. Psalm for cross conditions. Psalm to cure male children. Psalm to overcome evil spirit. You see all this? It's on the screen by Godfrey. And then what you do is you find the spell... Oh, uh, we just closed out the, the the preview for me. You find the spell, and then you go to um, that page. And um, like here it says, Psalm for danger at the sea. And it says, read Psalm 2. And then it says, the, uh, the words, the letters of which constitute. Damn, they won't let me get the preview. This the book, though. Y'all got to get a copy of this shit. Secret of the Psalms. And that's why I be saying, like, you know, all these Christians and shit like that. I'm like, do you know? What's in your book? There's some weird shit going on in your book, man. There's some crazy shit going on in your book. Father said he got the physical version on hold. Um, nah. They even got sacrifices in there, but they don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I don't know nothing about no sacrifices. Um, <laughs> I, no, honestly, I just don't. I, I, I don't know nothing about that. I'm sure it's true, um, but I uh, don't know nothing about that. Uh, and I'm very honest when I don't know shit about something. I just be like, I don't fucking know. I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. Or I don't know what I don't know. Or I know what I don't know, and I don't know what I don't know. Um, but thank you. Thank you for, for uh, calling in and, and, um, 
and 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 remind me of this. Black Books Wholesale Distribution. What company is this? Okay, so now it's reminding me what's going on here. All right, so why would a book like this be on a black bookstore? This is, and this, like I said, this stuff is what's circulating in the Hotep community for a while, um, for a minute now. This says published in 2015. I feel like this is older than that. I've seen this. Way yeah, it's probably that. a, um, a re uh, publication, like yeah. how they like. Yeah, it could be a republication. Yeah. yeah. Um, that one book that they always remake. Um. The Kai Billion every so often. Oh, Kai Balion or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but nah, thank you for calling in and reminding me of this. I gotta I gotta grab it and and do some meditations with this book next time I'm I go see my dad. I'm like, yo, where's that secret of the songs book? I'm gonna go in the basement and just do some fucking voodoo magic with the Bible real fast. Nah, for sure, because, like, this is about to help me, like, speed up these manifestations, including that uh, ZL1 we were talking about. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um. But this is, but that's why I was saying, like, in the Hotep community, like, this is the stuff we was passing around years ago, man, like. Like the stuff that people is just now getting hip to, I'm like, yo, I grew up on this shit, bro. Like, this is old. Like, I didn't forgot about this book. Is how old this shit was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So wait, when you said when you said earlier, you said you thought you knew where I was going with it when you said when I brought up the uh, the bigger ladies in the church. What did what did how oh, did you? Nah. Put- so what I was thinking was, you know, if there's a guy, why is everybody fat and sloppy and dying? And, 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 and if you if you find so much power in your Bible, why are you fat? You know what I mean? To me, it was just like, there's something wrong. There's something missing there, like where you're unhealthy, but you believe in Jesus Christ. It's like, don't you think you need to think about you first? You're going to be dead soon, lady, if you don't get your shit together. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, just, it just seemed like there was something off there. Well, to me, it was like the whole thing of like the creator wouldn't want you guys to spend this much energy if you guys, your lives aren't, you know, aligned yeah. the way that it. And it also was like, the creator don't need y'all to worship the creator. The creator is all energy. So, like, all energy is source. So, like, source doesn't need you to remind source how powerful source is. Source Word. knows you. God don't need you to worship him. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Man, they done clamped down on the, on the PDF search. I can get it. I can get the PDF. Um, but, um, actually I might just get the PDF so I have it and I don't have to wait to see my dad. Um, but yeah, this is in his library, not my library. I thought I had it. It's no, I remember that book. That, that book's right on his bookshelf. Wait, what's that? What's that one website you scrolled past? It said J S T O R. Oh, J store. Yeah. They had an interesting, uh, perspective. Like all yeah, the ancient they- books are on there. Like you can get, you got st- academic journals, books, um, prime, a lot of primary sources. So I used, uh, when I wrote my book, I actually had to buy a, uh, subscription to J store, uh, so I could have access to primary sources. Cause I didn't want secondhand sources. Like for example, when I was looking at, um, Anthony C Sutton's work, I would look at what he was citing and verify like I had to sit down and verify every fucking fact in every source but I still cited Sutton because I wanted people to know I got it from Sutton but I I still went to original sources and a lot of the original sources I couldn't get but I saw they was popping up on JSTOR so I was going there for primary sources just to fact check the fact check you know what I'm saying but JSTOR yeah, yeah. like if you ever doing research you're gonna need um, for yeah, you're going to need to, and it's worth the money. It's only like five bucks, 20 bucks or something like that a month. I forget what it is, but it's well worth it. Like if you got a Netflix subscription, you should have a subscription to JSTOR. Yeah, I found out about JSTOR. I was doing research about the curse of Canaan and things like that. And they had like this interesting book about um, its excuse for slavery and um, all of the religions and things like that. And um, yeah, and then uh, Princeton had like uh, verified the book is true or uh, factually accurate on their own website. Oh, I was okay. like, oh, I was like, wow. So like, hmm, 
now they want to talk about things not being aligned uh-huh. the way that but um yeah i have nothing else to add i appreciate you bro all right later last call of the day what is this the code and the secrets of the psalms i don't know what that one is some sort of journal heresy that's what a lot you, if you if i was to show some christians that book secret of the psalms is it's heresy you're not supposed to use the bible for magic I'm like everybody else using the bible for magic on your dumb ass But yeah, I might have to, I haven't done a deep meditation in a while. I might, I might use the Bible for a deep meditation soon. Um, I might do it this Sunday since it's, it's Easter. Everybody do they shit. I might pull out the Bible and fucking do some, put some magic in the air. That's what I might need to do. That's what I might need to do. I might have to put on my ceremonial robes, light some candles, you know, Get my incense. Yeah, I know I keep the incense on deck. What I got right here? Is this my frankincense? Oh no, this is my myrrh. You know I keep you know I keep the Yeah you know I mean that's how I do my incense. I don't do sticks. Y'all yeah, can do the sticks. I don't do sticks. I got I I do real incense. You know what I'm saying? Like my incense. I like the frankincense better though. I don't really like the myrrh smell. The frankincense, I think a lot of it is because I've been conditioned to like it because I grew up in um Christian uh the uh Catholic Church. So I prefer the frankincense. It's the, it's the frankincense right here. It look like crack. Um, I prefer the frankincense. Um, I think it's just a better smell. Some people don't like it. I love it. I love the smell of frankincense. So I like to pull some of that out and, and do some voodoo magic with y'all Bible this Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you use the oils? I like that. I like that. I would love to use the oils. I should probably do that. I should probably do that. Um, Rumble, thank you for uh, hanging in there with me. Appreciate you. You said that wasn't a 2000 looking cover, even for a low volume print. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell archive has it. It says 1982 publication date. There you go. Yeah. I've seen that book. Like my dad used to, when I was a kid, my dad used to show me books and he'd be like, when you get old enough, I'll explain this to you. And then when I got old enough, He'd be like, all right, you old enough. Read this. Read this. And it got to a point where I was like 20, and he was like, you're not ready for the next set of books. Like, you're just not spiritually ready. Like, And then when I was, he was like, all right, read this. And he, he divulged more information to me. But I wasn't living my life right, which is why he wasn't giving me the information. Because Maybe because I would have drifted to the dark side. I don't know. Shout out to my super chatters, Francisco Sanchez, Teresa, Jabaria, Judah, the Martian, Kelson. Appreciate you. So, yeah, you know, uh, I might give you all a lot of hell uh, on being Christians, but I'm not anti-Bible. Two, two different things. I'm not anti-Christian. I'm not anti-Bible. I just want better uh, understanding of the Bible. And one day, like I said, I'll sit down and I'll do my due diligence on it all and but I always said I was going to save that for my 50s. So when I get there, that's what will occur. The smoke from the sticks keeps the mosquitoes away? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But why wouldn't the smoke from my resin keep the mosquitoes away? Right? It should, right? I got smoke. I got a lot of smoke on my incense. Um, well, I guess that would be versus oil, right? Anyway, you guys have a wonderful week, uh, weekend, um, Easter weekend, spend it with your family, have fun at the Easter egg hunt and all that good stuff. And uh, I'll be back Monday, man. Until then, be well, stay merry, tell somebody in your family that you love them. And as always, Hotep and Bill. Envision a sanctuary where community and sustainability are the cornerstones of living. In this haven, every family is able to grow their own food, children flourish through homeschooling tailored to unlock their full potential, and education extends beyond textbooks, instilling self-worth and a deep understanding of the world around them. 
Here, goodwill isn't just an ideal, it's the essence of daily life, where respect for law and order harmonizes with the community's resourcefulness. This place isn't just a dream, it's a call to action for everyone who believes in a better, more connected way of living. Join us in building a future where each individual's contributions create a tapestry of enduring harmony and prosperity. Join us in Ho Tapistan, 